to the fucking bottom. Put the suffer with me while I have to draw um, a revised version of this picture. So this is the original one. It's very dark and dull so um, I got tips from a really really good artist on how I could improve the composition. So that's what I'm doing right now. So it's all pretty. Smiley face. I got that one and there was another one I was doing. No, I did. In the community tab, I had um, one of the Gabranth that I did recently, which I'm happy with. I gotta fix up this Gabranth and all the shadows and stuff on this one. I gotta put a big bright butterfly right in the middle. I'm waiting for it to save now. <laughs> it's too big. What have we done? Hello everyone who's popping up. You'll have to forgive me if um, I end up like quiet every now and then. This is a, a good study, technically. So I haven't decided if I'm pulling this curtain anymore or not. But we're going to make some pretty stuff happen. Okay, so the fans are in here somewhere. My computer is hating my guts right now. What's the music? Uh, it's all epidemic, but I'm gonna pause this one. And Find some similar to this one. I like my like happy music. Rapper queen. <laughs> nah, sadly I don't I don't do that. I ain't that that good at music. Okay, I gotta fix all my values and stuff, so this is this is how you composition garbage um and see and make sure that everything stands out. Because if it stands out in black and white, then it's generally not too bad. So yeah. Can I get a bit louder? I'll move my microphone closer. I think it was too far away, so that wouldn't have helped. Mood. <laughs> Yeah, these two, uh, so this is Kimiko, for those who don't know. Um, oops. And this is this guy, when he was a little, little, little kid. And that's his dad. Um, who was in the community post yesterday. <laughs> I don't know if I really want it too dark, but I do want it darker. like too bright as it is right now. Oh my gosh, computer, why? When you make your own shimmy you download a shimmy and um, then you change all of the the pictures. Why is Gab, dad, sad, dad. Uh, cause this is the day after his wife died. Um, I know I only, I only make the most, like, uh, lovely, happy pieces. 
I don't know who who Indo is. If you mean like Andy, then his name is not Indo. And this is my stream, so prob probably like he in the shadows somewhere. How are people? They they practice a lot. They draw a lot, and they work extremely hard. The amount of hours I've spent drawing is insane. So it's like you have you have to be willing to try really hard all the time with no like um I, you take breaks obviously but like it's it's effort like so much effort uh alina is with two e's instead of an i otherwise it'd be alina i think which is what we had before well it's my job Yes, it's only my job though, because I spent a lot of time trying to get like better at Came for a chilled art session left with depression. Oof. Yeah. M Souls. Uh I only spend two to three hours drawing because my to be honest, like getting an hour in a day is pretty good. I draw too much. But yeah. I'm trying to improve as much as I can, and I'm working really hard to achieve that. Okay, I gotta fix Gibrant. Because he's a sad boy, and I've gotta make the lighting hit him nicer, and make everything stand out a bit more. And put more blue. I need blue and purple in this entire piece. Also, do you like my window? Do you know how long I spent on the damn window? It's a window, and look, it's got pretty... I don't know what the hell it is, but it's pretty. So, you know, it's good enough. There's a butterfly, like, design at the very top. So I gotta put a butterfly there. What do I do to practice? Okay, so, um, you, you need to know what you want to draw first, and then you practice the thing you don't know how to do. So if you can't draw hands, you just draw hands. Only hands. Draw, like, 50 billion hands, um, and then cry over having to draw hands and how annoying fingers are and then you know like you keep you keep sort of picking one thing and the thing that you can't do is the thing that you're supposed to study you can't no do you know how many people can't draw a person i can't draw a person the anatomy is like bad on some of these it's like it's not the easiest thing to do so it's not really it's not something you can just say, oh, I'm bad at it because I can't do it. Because some of the professionals don't know what the hell they're doing either with anatomy. Because anatomy is so awkward. Kind of reminds me of Hawk. Well, I have no clue what that is. Um, I can't draw a person. Amy, what? No, it's true though. Like, okay, so there's, there's like all these little things. Like, the back should probably be arched more and stuff. But then there's clothes on it. And I don't know how the clothes are supposed to fold especially on a child's body how does that work and then this pose oh gosh that pose why i picked like the most awkward things for myself to draw but i wanted it so i can almost draw paper i just have to learn poses yeah to learn poses you need to learn uh center of gravity and like motion lines and I'm still trying to learn poses. I'm getting there and I'm proud of myself that I'm getting there. But it's it's a lot of work. So don't sell yourself short if you can't do something because a lot of people can't really do these things. How do you draw eyes? There are lots of tutorials for eyes. I would suggest having a look at like the realistic eye styles because even anime eyes are taken from like those first. Okay, now put some blue. Uh, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry, Gab. I feel like such an, a such a butt to him because I only make him like sad. I made him angry yesterday, but like that's not common and probably not really gonna happen again for a very long time. It's okay, Gab. I will give you pats one day and then, and no pun intended, by accident there. I'll make him happy. I do want to draw a picture of him with the, his wife at some point, because she's great and I like her a lot. Can we have a wholesome Gab? I have drawn wholesome Gab pictures. There's, there's a few. 
And then there'll be a few more. There was gonna be one on the wall back here, which I gotta re-put on. Um, but I gotta put it in a way where it's not in the way of the rest of the storytelling elements, because that was a problem I had before with clutter. Uh, why can't he be a happy father? Because because I don't think you would be happy straight after your wife died. I mean, that'd be a little bit suspicious otherwise. I don't know how I would feel about that. I don't think he'd be very... Like, kid's upset. They're both wearing black, so they're going to a funeral. And he just does not want to look outside. So he's sitting in his, his bedroom next to the window and his powers just decide, you know what, like, you're sad. I'm just going to make things worse for you because I can. And, oh, look, your kids come in the room. You know what we should do? We should just go after your kid for some reason because why not? Dark pictures are really, um... They're really interesting to draw because you have to try and like put in all this subtle emotion and you can't just... You, you really have to work if you want to make that feeling come through. So it's, it's really good practice. It's sad, but it's good practice. I think that's why I like Gabrant so much is I can put him all these like situations because he's kind of gotten himself into some horrible stuff in life uh, but it makes for really good learning curves and emotional pieces I like how I'm watching this pretending like I understand well you don't I mean you don't have to uh, try cubism no it's not really my thing you can't draw a dog I would suggest probably looking at um probably looking at references of your dog and learning how to draw little things. If you don't understand how something works, just go to your dog because you have a 3D reference right in front of you, which is that is so helpful. Um and just look at like your dog from different angles and like how everything works and you'll be eventually able to draw your dog. You just got to do it lots. Will the boy be sad with his dad? Yeah, he's sad too. They're both- see, look, they're, they're, they're a family that shares. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> oh, what have I done to my children? I am so sorry, children. <laughs> I love you. Sometimes. Could have made Ethan's teddy bear a dinosaur. No, I knew that was coming because somebody else said the exact same thing. And my music stopped, I'm just going to turn it back on. Um, turn it down a little bit. Oh, uh, where's my- I'm missing my tab! Where did my tab go? I have a- I have too many things open again. Like, the smart person that I am. Okay, okay, I got it. Yay! Oh, thank you so much for the donation! Uh, I love your art. What's uh, it's what got me started into digital art. I hope your arm is doing okay. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, my arm is doing a lot better. We actually found out that I have um, RSI, so repetitive strain injury. I can't remember if that's exactly what it's called. Um, but yeah, it was from typing, funnily enough, not from drawing, which was a pain in the butt because when I couldn't draw I would resort to writing scripts and stuff instead. So it kind of just didn't help the situation in the slightest. I'm happy we figured it out though. So that makes things a lot easy, uh, easier. Also, um, I'll let Andy know. Hi, someone, someone who donated says hello. Sup? Oh, thank you. My man bringing me stuff. <laughs> yeah, he just comes in and then says hello and then leaves. Yeah, no, not a lot of people knew about my arm issues because I guess I wasn't very vocal about it apart from like on social media. And every now and then if I live streamed. Um, 
but it had been going on for like over a year to two years and then I was like it got to a point where I don't think I could draw at all which sucked so of course when I finally could draw I was very adamant that I wanted to be able to draw better so I could convey all of the emotions I wanted in my pictures I was just started drawing a lot more emotional pieces like these ones um they're a good binting like thing which is cool I'm gonna put you back over here Ethan stop running away found the Instagram of the guy who plays Tama. I know, I know, right? He looks so different than what you would think he sounds like, but it's amazing. Uh, we had him singing like a random line from a song and it was hilarious as um, Tama. I think it was like, I've got bills, but it was just like, I've got pills and I'm gay. That was the best thing ever. Oh my gosh, I burst out laughing for that. Why are you sad? I'm not sad. The characters are sad, but that's because it's a, it's what's happening in the story for them. Uh, oh, I'm really happy you guys are enjoying the um, the live stream. I just remembered no school tomorrow because it's a bank holiday. Yeah, I still have work. I don't think like I get those days off. I also need to. I'm gonna zoom in on Gabranth more and clean it up. Because if I want people to, like, if you want to draw the attention to certain places, you've got to make sure it's, like, clean. Like, the more detailed it is and clean it is, the more likely it tends to draw focus. So I've got to fix up little bits and pieces, fix up his hand, put the, the light where it should be. Then I'm going to draw all of the shadows coming up through... And pulling in towards like the one spot where Ethan is so that I can keep all of the direction going in the right place so I've, I've learned a lot from this piece thanks to um, a lovely lovely artist called John I can't remember his last name Wait, I'll see if I can find it because it's I do have a tab open John Lauren so he's an artist that I found on Twitter and he's he's just like really good Oh, it's on a Monday so children don't go to school. I wish. Nobody likes Mondays. It used to make no difference when I was a fr just a freelancer because like I could work on a Sunday and then just take Monday off if I really wanted to but it doesn't really work that way when you're working a 9 to 5 uh, job. I'm trying to figure out like where exactly I want this light to bounce off him. I gotta make sure he stands out from the wall behind him. I don't want him blending in. Like, I had issues with the, the original composition. Uh, I'm just going to move this down so that it's easier to compare it. I think that's about right. So, like, that was what I had originally. And, like, it still looks nice. But, obviously, like, there were a few things that needed to be... Uh, fixed and I've still got to put stuff in the background behind Gabranth, but I'm trying to make sure it's not cluttering it too much to where you can't see him properly. We've just got like all of these zodiac uh, signs in <laughs> in chat for some reason. I feel like I've missed something. You love this picture. It's so sad. I think I, the reason I like this picture is because it's sad. I love emotional pieces. I don't know what it is, but there's something like satisfying about looking at a picture and feeling like you understand what they're going through just from how they look. It's really cool. Oh gosh, if I found out it was Monday, I think I'd cry. I don't want it to be Monday. I only get two days a week to draw stuff that I want to draw so please don't take that away from me <laughs> I need it I wonder if that's too bright yeah it's too bright it grabs too much attention and I don't want to bring all the attention to Gabranth's hair 
I want you to see his hair and know that he's sitting in the corner where all of these dark shadows are, but I don't want him to be like so prominent that he outshines his child which is standing there. I love you Gab, but you've got too many pictures and Ethan needs a few more, so you can be secondary in this picture. Even though it's mostly about you because I'm sorry. Your plane leaves for vacation on Monday. Oh, that's cool. I'm excited, actually. I thought when I say I'm excited, I sound almost monotoned. Okay, I'm trying to think about all of the notes and stuff that I was given. I were given a lot of compositional notes and like reasons as to why you change things and I'm really trying to fix all of my compositional flaws. They're not like terrible compositions etc. It's just that obviously there's certain things that I could have done to explain the story and whatnot more clearly which is what I would like to try and do. Your Browns used to have long hair. I really liked his long hair. I thought he looked pretty. Did you cry for a few scenes? What? I'm a little confused. Unless you meant like, did I cry over like this? I think I got teary eyed actually when I started drawing this one, just because it makes me sad, but I like it. Uh, can you please leave the Athmal chats for out of this? chat specifically. If you want to talk about Afmal, you can go to her, her channel for that. Yeah, I think I've asked people this before, but it always pops up anyway. <laughs> Did actually give Ethan more of like an outline to help him stand out from the window because his skin is a little bit um, lighter so I didn't want him blending in. I'm a Leo. This is the first time you actually got here live. Woohoo! I don't stream very often but I do every now and then. It's mostly if like um I fancy some company while I've got like something to do. I don't like streaming if I got nothing to do because then it just becomes awkward and I feel like I'm rushing to come up with a concept of something to draw. It's become a lot better since I've had like full paintings that I can work on or like a project. I feel like that's gonna... I don't know how to draw arms at this angle. The reference was no help when I had the reference for this either because it was awkward. Okay, if I use a lighter colour here, I think I can get away with being able to show his hands a little bit more without like it looking like his hands disappear into the black void that is his arm. And then I can actually scrunch up the fabric to go between the, the fingers a little bit, like he's gripped it. You want to feel the pain that he's feeling, because that's what this piece is for. If your art invokes sadness and that's what your goal is, you succeeded. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have fun making Gibranth have a scenario for this one. Same for... Um, Alec, although I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get Alec to do Ethan's kid voice when he's like six years old, because that, that's um, a little bit difficult. You don't want to feel this- well, I'm sorry, you gotta feel this pain, okay? Everyone needs to feel somebody's pain. Uh, it won't be a speed pain, it'll just be a still image, but I will have a, a scenario voiced over the top. 
I'm gonna see if I can um, make the, the picture look like really pretty and have some slight movement on it. That's what my goal is anyway. I do like the dramatic lighting coming down on Gilbranth where it's like it's only hitting like this kind of grouped area. Kind of shows that he's like really not close to the light but close enough where it hits him just on the front how do you make a comic um comics are hard i started a comic okay i've started more than one comic uh the problem that i had is trying to keep up with finishing the comic so it doesn't really matter if your panels look terrible and you don't understand how to do a layout for a comic or you're, you're not very good at storytelling yet, etc. Like, you'll learn it all as you go. It's more difficult to keep up with the uploading and actually finishing a long comic. And that's something that I just don't have the time or the resolve for because I'd get frustrated with something or I didn't have time to work on it then and there when I had all these cool ideas. So it kind of just ends up on the back burner and then just doesn't get finished. So one day I'll finish stuff, but the next time I do a comic I am not uploading it until it's 100% done. That way I know it'll be finished. I wonder if I need that much light in that one spot or if I should dull it back a little bit. Yeah, I imagine not everyone in the comments probably knows who these characters are, but yeah. What is subscribers group name for us? Um, to be honest, I just called people my inspirations just because it's a generic, you know, like you guys all obviously inspire me to keep going with my artwork and do stuff. But um. To be honest, I don't think I needed a name for my fans. You guys have your own individual names, and I just kind of like thinking of you guys as that. Just a group of individuals who like my stuff and are willing to chat with me, which is nice. I don't know, I don't want like my fan base to just become an ob obsession, I suppose. I just want us to be a group of creatives that like creative stuff and want to do creative stuff together. And really like Gabranth, because he's got great abs. Just saying. I, don't, I can say that now because I've drawn his abs. Everyone has seen his abs now, so it is a legitimate thing I can say. He's got good abs, guys. Uh, I have not watched Endgame and I've not watched um, Infinity War because I am um, okay. I can't say I'm lazy because I'm definitely not lazy. I'm trying to stop being like self sabotaging. <laughs> I'm trying hard. Um, I kind of just like I'm normally too busy because um, I only get two days off a week to, to draw like the stuff I want. Otherwise, I'm drawing work stuff and I kind of just like to enjoy a nice quiet weekend normally just drawing my own stuff I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon Gab how do you draw your shoes what kind of shoes I don't know if his feet are the right size I think his feet need to be a bit bigger his shoes like non-existent I don't think anything is terrible I actually have like gone away from stuff like that if somebody likes something just let them like it if you don't like it eh, just you know like the stuff you like leave the stuff you don't I don't expect everyone to like my story um, but I'm quite happy to welcome those who do 
also your opinions change as you get older, I suppose. So, like, eventually you may like it more so than you did, like, years ago, and for different reasons. Like, I like a lot of what most people consider to be garbage, but I like it because I can see the skill behind what's been made from the garbage. <laughs> so it's kind of like this love-hate relationship of, man, the story for this is not very good, but man, that shot looks great. So, yeah, kind of love everything and hate everything at the same time. If you want to draw people dancing, I'd highly suggest grabbing, like, dancing footage from YouTube and then looking at the poses that people generally get into when dancing. Uh, there was a really cool artist that I followed for a long time, uh, and at one point she was just drawing dancing poses. All of her OCs just in dancing poses, all wearing, like, tuxedos and fancy dresses, and my gosh, it was amazing. Art is a very inspiring and awesome thing, and I really like being able to see it on my timeline and stuff a lot when I use social media. Hmm. I know it's gonna get a lot darker through here, because there's gonna be... I almost want it like a web, actually. It'd look cool. Why... Uh, is that why your channel name has been a trash- uh, No, it was actually just a joke name because I saw a trash can full of trash and I needed a name for a game. But it kind of like came up with multiple uses for it as the years have gone on, so like I've got no regrets. Oh, poor Gab. I want to give him a hug. Gab, let me hug- become real so I can hug you, dang it. This is the only problem with having OCs is I can't give them hugs when I completely destroy their lives. <laughs> Why have I done this to myself? I'm like an eternal torture. There will be a wholesome picture at one point with these two hugging because I just really need it framed on my desk. You could do black vines. No, it doesn't really work for um, what theirs is. So basically, like, these these big pieces here, um, they've all got, like, this really weird wispy feel like this. And they're all going to pull towards the center where Ethan is. Um, because And they're all sporadic, and they've got no real purpose. Like, they're not contained properly, and he doesn't know that he's even doing it. So they need to be kind of, like, really... I'm trying to think of like the word, but I can't think of the word. My brain's just dead. Like like everything else. I'm sorry, Elena. Ah I dare you to draw the mouse. No. That makes more sense. Yeah, I like I like like everything in this picture has some kind of purpose. Um So for example, like this this part of the window with the butterfly in it. Uh, the butterfly is like a family symbol that uh, the wife and mother used to use. And that was what she called her safety charm. And of course, like, it's the only thing that's protecting Ethan while he's standing in front of his father who's just lost everything that he had reason to live for with. That's duck. Yes, it's duck. Welcome to my channel. Where you thought one thing was dark in somebody else's channel, and then you realize that I'll probably just make it worse. Uh, I use Photoshop. So I do everything that I do in Photoshop. But yeah, I like, I like this kind of dark stuff, just because watching them get over this kind of dark stuff, you, you don't normally expect someone to get over it, because it's just it's too much. But it's nice to see them eventually confront all this and they learn from it, they grow as a person, they find a reason to live and they eventually become happy and I guess that, that happiness means more when you know they haven't felt a lot of happiness. Like Abranth was happiest when he was with his wife and like that's still like, how many years were they together? 
I think it's like 10 something years that they were together. So that's, that's a good amount of time. He had all of these, these years where he was in perfect bliss. He had a good house. He had a, a kid that absolutely adored him and followed him around. He had a wife who was extremely pretty and like kind of kind of a very important figure so she was they, they were very well off and like everything and she was respected within the entire like big society that they live in and then as soon as she passed away everything just for him everything felt like it fell to pieces because she was the one keeping it together but you know eventually I suppose he'll learn that he can hold things together too if he's actually willing to try. Can't believe I'm I'm actually up and watching. Yay! That always makes me sad with the emotional moments he voices. I love that stuff, it's so good. <laughs> ben loves putting her OCs through dark stuff. It's all about the journey. That it is. Well, the thing is, like, not all of our life is going to be happy. Uh, and I guess that's why we like stories so much. We want to see these people go through stuff that we can't even imagine happening to us. And we just want to see them overcome it. And then, like, you kind of feel pepped up, like, you could do it too. And then it's just amazing. And that's why I love stories so much. I just wanted to see, like, my favourite characters overcome all of these hardships that they were going through. I feel like he might have made it lighter. I probably should. I should make your brows probably a little bit lighter. Let's just pull out the brightness meter, guys, and do that, and then just put it over brows. This is one of my favorite tools, and you'll see why in a second. So I made the whole picture brighter, and it takes all the detail away from the window, so I'm not keeping it there. Then you do this, and then you just fill it. So now the only thing that's brighter is Gibranth. And he definitely needed that. That's that was like way too dark. And so now he pops out a little bit more. Which is good, so. It means when I put the shadows in as well, he should stand out more. Nice backstory. I haven't seen too much keyboard. That's okay. Um, to be honest, I kinda want people to be able to see hints of my OCs through just one picture. Like, this picture can say more about one moment than I could talk about probably for an hour. Because I can't convey how he feels the same way as I can in this picture. <laughs> I thought I was going to say Amy loves seeing a character suffer. Look, if I don't like the character, maybe, but I don't like seeing Gibranth suffer. He just has to... Okay, that sounds terrible, but yeah, he has to suffer. So does Ethan, so does uh, Kaizen. I don't want Tama to suffer because he's Tama, and I love him. I love all of these children, but, like, some of them have got to suffer, okay? And this just the sad potluck of this guy's the protagonist, so he's got to suffer, and this guy's the protagonist's dad, so he's got to suffer. Okay, that's how it works, right? Pictures do think is, uh, speak a thousand words, so it makes sense. Yeah, pretty much. No Tama angst. Oh my gosh, can you imagine like Tama as a teenager just having teenage angst? I don't know if he could. Like, they already can't tell when Tama smiles in, like, the house that he's in. Just because his expression always looks kind of neutral. There's only, like, one, one or two people that can tell. And one of them is Miko, the cat girl with the bright orange hair. And the other one is, um, Fluff, who is a human that just, like, goes to their place to go to concerts. <laughs> Look at the weirdest dang characters. <laughs> I literally got a human who's just betraying her country to go to a concert in an elven city, and that's it. 
So don't be related to the protagonist and then you won't have to suffer. That's, that's literally it. That's how you survive everything. My brain's just died. What was I doing? I was checking something and it's just disappeared now. Okay, I found it. Never mind. Okay. Weird characters are the most interesting and fun though. Yeah, I, I literally like went out of my way to try and make all my characters as interesting and so that their personality was easier to write. Like, um, I needed a serious character so we ended up with Brom. But I didn't want Brom to just be a stick in the mud who ruins everybody else's fun. Because it's only fun if he does that to certain people. So he does it to everyone who's not his daughter or his wife. His daughter and his wife he's the opposite of. It's like Hughes from FMA because I absolutely adored him and I still do. But I wanted a character like that who just like he sees his daughter and he turns like a 180 and he's suddenly just completely different. He's just like oh my gosh my darling daughter I love you so much I'll do anything for you. Like if he goes out shopping somewhere and his daughter likes something he will buy it along with everything else that she wants and it's normally the mother who has to be the sound of reason to get him to leave certain things alone and to stop spoiling her she thinks it's funny so it's just kind of great i can play with really dumb concepts and it doesn't matter what I, what i can put my characters into it works to some degree and i can make a stupid moment out of it i have no ocs except for a fruit bat Eh, you can start small. To be honest, not everyone, like, wants to make OCs. I made characters because I needed them to fill roles in my story, and I find that's the easiest way to make characters. Um, because it's- you've got, like, a base to work with of things that you want them to do. Aw, oh, Cabranth looks so sad. What have I done? I just want to, like, give him a hug. That's what I want, but I can't, and I- damn it. What have I done? One day I need to give Pat a hug. That'll fix everything, right? And then, like, if I do anything to Laz, I'll just give Andy a hug. <laughs> it's just gonna get to a point where I'm just hugging IRL people. I'm just like, I'm so sorry for what I've done. <laughs> Uh, that stick in the mud loves his daughter, almost like Carrot loves cheesecake. Literally that, right? So, like, I think the only reason I did that with Carrot is because I wanted something really dumb. So it's just like, okay, well, I'm not gonna give him the typical, you know, he's a rabbit, so he has to like carrots, because apparently carrots aren't even good for rabbits. I think that was only discovered recently. But, like, I'm just like, okay, so what can I give him then that's just random? So I picked my favorite thing at the time, which happened to be cheesecake. I'm just like, perfect. So every time he's like offered or given cheesecake, his personality is just happy and he'll do whatever you say. I'm going to draw more pictures of them as well. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that because I really do love drawing character on Relic. Eventually, like, I, there's like so many goals that I have of things I really want to make, but obviously time is a factor and money... Because I, I can't... I'm not going to ever ask people to do stuff for free for me. I have to pay them. Because I expect or would like the exact same courtesy. So eventually when I've got like money saved up and I can do stuff. I'd love to like eventually make some games and stuff. Actually finish a comic would be nice. Learn how to... Oh I want to do an art book too. I want to put all these pretty pictures in one book. And just have pictures of my OCs with like little short stories or maybe like the scripts for a couple of them and stuff like that as well. I, I really want to do that too. <laughs> I actually have um an Amy and Andy comic that I did which is just me telling Pat to do the thing and he just talks like Gabranth while wearing Gabranth's clothes and I squee like a little girl. But no, I'm never I'm never going to force or ask really my uh the VAs to do stuff like that. I do want to have um them do little things on the channel. Like I'd love to see 
could burn up to play a scary game one day. Or, um, tell him to do a do not, do not laugh video, and because, like, he's Tama, he's just like, no one can tell that he's grinning from ear to ear because it doesn't look like it. <laughs> or another, like, reaction to fan art that I did, like, ages and ages ago. I think it's been over a year now. I really liked doing that one, it was pretty cool. I wanted to find like this piece here so it doesn't get lost behind the wall but I think that's too much probably so I'm just gonna get the black and put the black there instead so it takes a little bit out of it yeah fangirling over your own OCs must be quite the it literally is like the first time I ever heard Ethan speak I was so giddy I think I smiled the whole day um because he was the first OC I ever made and I'd met him when I was like a teenager so I was just like okay I know exactly what I want Ethan to sound like and I think Pat helped me find uh, Alec the one who voices Ethan for me and I was just I was so happy for the entire day I listened to it over and over and over again uh, I don't think I shut up about it to Andy either There'll be points where we'll just talk about my OCs because I love my OCs too much. But yeah, it's really, really, really cool. I still fangirl. Every time I get audio of my OCs, like I got I got audio of Gibranth as little kid, and oh my gosh, he just died, and then Seth as a little kid, and he sounds so cute. And now I died because I'm a terrible person and I've ruined their friendship. <laughs> What have I done to my children, damn it? I feel like that should be my catchphrase. It's just what have I done? Trying to... Shoes are hard. I know, like, the rough idea of shoes, but it doesn't help if, like, you've got something covering where the foot would be, because the shoe, you'd have, like, the piece that goes at the back, and then it comes down a little bit, but not always, depending on what the shoe is. Plus, I think I've, like, curved this where I shouldn't have, so it needed to be straight. And then this is actually not straight, because your foot is not straight. Your foot curves inwards at your foot. Feet are weird. Who voices Kid Gab? Uh, because he was only, like, 12, 13, um, uh, Pat voiced him, and, uh, Chris ended up voicing Seth because he was the voice of Seth beforehand. So they still sound like relatively the same-ish, like because obviously they're the same VAs, but Seth is gonna sound a little bit different than what everyone was used to, because before that he had like this really deep and like emotionless voice. Um, and when he's little, he's not that way at all. He's like super peppy and hyped and weird. Who sneaks into bars where he shouldn't be because why not? I love watching like OC children do stupid things. It's just interesting to see what they would do. His shoes are shiny. Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay. The shoes, these shoes, they, they lift off the ground and they get pointed a little bit. So they're not like completely flat on the, the ground. I saw a tutorial about this like three or four days ago, so my brain's just sort of remembering and telling me that I'm dumb. And that goes like, it goes inwards so much. Gab, why did, why did you have to wear awkward shoes that I gave you? Damn it. This is a problem with having OCs. You can't blame them for anything because you're the one that made the, the logical decision of putting them in what they are. Or how you drew them. Because I decided to make most of my men buff. Why? It was not a smart move. I came here to watch edits uh, and saw this and couldn't help myself. Well, I don't know if I've ever done edits. So I'm confused, but... Hey, me, I love this character. Character is innocent. Time to give him a sappy backstory. <laughs> Lol. 
Um, I mean, there's certain characters I have that don't. Uh, Hime, for example, Hime has a very happy, good childhood, and she's going to have a happy, good life. She's she's a very good, uh, nice kid, and I love her to bits. Ethan, his story couldn't exist unless these events happened. So it's it's like as much as they suck they used as plot progression and to be honest it's a good building experience for Gabranth as well because I don't know if he would do much if Alina was still alive whereas now he's forced to actually fix so many of the problems that he was struggling with like way 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 back so we all get to see him grow and we can be proud of him. Eventually he smiles for real, not just an awkward smile, but like a genuine happy smile. That's uh, just nice. Still can't draw animals. Animals are hard to draw. Uh, again, like you need to grab like references, uh, figure out what you're struggling with specifically, look at how the muscle structure works, look at them in different poses, how they'd shift and move. Because all the muscle structures are so bizarre. Every time you move even a little bit, sometimes the muscle structure completely changes because you're tensing one muscle and you're relaxing another one. And your entire body will like shift in really weird ways to actually become comfortable. And the same applies to obviously a animal's uh, anatomy. They're going to be different because this, this is just different, but yeah. You drew your first successful anime person this week. I'm so happy for you. It, I'm like, it's funny because um, a lot of people would like tell people not to go with anime first. I don't think it really matters what you go with first. Obviously it matters if you want to become like a professional because you have to learn a lot of things. And I don't think anime is a bad learning tool. But I think there are certain things that people tend to overlook uh, when they draw anime because they're looking at the more simplistic version of a person rather than like the correct version of a person but yeah I mean if you want to draw anime that's that's to be honest like power to you because it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of style involved so there's also a lot of references nowadays which is really cool okay I'm gonna do this and then I'm just gonna do that because I am lazy and then just flip it because I am lazy see a butterfly this is gonna sound really depressing but anyway have you ever been like wow I can't like do the whole art thing every day Andy Andy can 100% um, tell you that I do that every day Art's really hard, and unfortunately, like, I don't think it helps with, like, uh, uh, the way that we are, like, on the internet and stuff, because, like, your world starts revolving around numbers, and if you don't reach, like, a certain amount of numbers when you're making something, you feel like it's not good enough, or, to be honest, like, you could have a picture that to everyone else looks perfect, but you'll only ever see the flaws, and because you know those flaws are there, you're not happy with it. You're also worried that other people won't like it, even if they do. It's like, there's so many things that become a problem. But, I love it too much to leave it, and I'm getting better every day, and my characters can't exist if I don't draw. So I draw for them. And me. Because I love my OCs. So. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> to be honest, you brought like a, a, a good topic up. Because people don't really talk about that kind of stuff a lot. You see artists and you, so you see what they put out. But you don't see the hardship behind what they're making. And this goes for like everything. So. I really like the... Um, those kinds of topics a lot. Okay, I don't try to figure out what way I can make this look like super pretty. Cause I want it to be blue, but I don't know if that blue is the color blue that I want. Um 
I like to pick awkward things. That's that's the way I do everything. Okay, so if I go with this blue, and then I just do this. It looks okay, but it's not quite what I'm after. What if I got rid of the middle? Miss an option. This is the compositional side of everything, of trying to figure out what would look best where and why you would put it there in the first place. Personally having a hard time figuring out your OC's faces. OC's, like, actually, facial structure is really awkward. Um, so I did a meme. Lol. Um, I did a meme recently that, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna go into here and I'm gonna go find it. It's in 2000, was it in May? No, it wasn't in May. It would be in April then. Here we go. So this meme was entirely about faces and two years before this all of my faces looked like copied and pasted faces for both guys and girls they all look the same and something that i had to learn over the past like year or two is how different male and female faces generally are and like the the weird parts of the face that people don't think about when they draw like children's faces tend to be a little bit less um like these aren't refined as much so you've got less of a bridge on the nose you can draw it like more chubby and they don't have that long long face that um uh what's it called an older male might have uh feminine faces tend to be a little bit rounder that was a terrible example Chibis are uh, like children, so you can get away with like making the eyes giant and whatnot and tiny noses. So everything is really weird because you've got to put age into it and you've got to put masculine features. Every character will have a different shaped nose or like where their eyes are placed. There's a lot that you can get wrong, but there's a lot you, you can do right. Even if it doesn't look correct, it often is. It's really bizarre. You're using an IRL photo of yourself. That's a good, like, I applaud you because I didn't use references until years later and then realized that it was dumb of me to do so because it would have been very useful way back. <laughs> okay, if I do this, um, and maybe just like lower the opacity. No, I don't really want to lower the opacity. It doesn't look as nice. Well, for now, I'm going to keep that like that. I'm going to fix it later. I know I want to fix this bit specifically, but I'm going to move the shadows around if I can remember where they are. Do you guys want to see something really cool? It's super easy to do, and everyone should do it when they want to be a lazy artist like me. So you get the smudge tool, and you make it a big smudge tool, it's just round. Then what you do, is you grab whatever thing you want to look magically-ish, and you <laughs> you just smudge it. I'm gonna lower the brush so it's faster. Okay, now we can get into the fun stuff. So I'm pulling everything in one direction, it's all gonna head towards Ethan in the middle. I'm gonna have him like crawl along the curtains. And it's starting to look like, if you go back and forward, you can make it like, wispy-ish. Then you can put another colour in, and then like, you can smoosh the colours, and they look cool. It also gives it like a blur motion effect, kind of. This is how I do all of Ethan's magic as well. I kind of just pick a direction that I want things to go in, and then I just smudge it. Wow, magic. Doing that for shading. I actually don't use uh, smudging or blurring or anything on shading when I shade. Especially not on clothes because of the folds. I tend to find that I like a, a good harsh fold every now and then. 
Uh, so I normally like switch between a hard and a soft brush. Okay, these two are blending in too much, so I'm just going to separate these two. Come on. Okay, there we go. Much better. So I managed to separate that a little bit. Yeah, so Gibranth doesn't actually know he's doing this. Um, his mindset is on one thing specifically, and the shadow is kind of like feeding thoughts to him at the same time because it really wants control and it can't get it. So this is like the easiest place for him to get control uh, for it to get control because his emotions are all over the place. He's not thinking about keeping it in place and he's not thinking about looking after Ethan either. The only thing he's thinking about is that he's lost everything. Um, and he doesn't care at this point either. Like, I've been through moments like this so like it's, it's kind of a weird thing but yeah. There's gonna be points where every character is gonna make really stupid mistakes. Um, and he he realizes this after Ethan freaks out and gets scared, but he's okay because he's got the pretty blue butterfly to look after him. What would happen if it did get control? You would have Seth. So I'm sure, like obviously, those who who've watched my stuff have seen Seth, and um, Seth is a husk. He doesn't really have any muscle left. He talks. Almost like in a, not quite in a third person, but he only talks with like a, a very um, neutral sort of idea in mind of whatever somebody else has told him to do. So he, he only has one objective and he'll stick to that objective no matter what damage it causes to him or anyone else. And he doesn't care about people anymore. He has no empathy um, or anything. So basically these things feed on your strongest or their strongest uh, negative emotion and whatever that go or the goal was to achieve that um, is what they keep when they've completely taken over because they, they grow from the person that they've been like using as a host. So is that why his hair turned white? Yes. I don't know if you've noticed but there's a couple of characters that have got white in their hair. Um, so yeah. You can see Annie's can oh lol yeah no we did um a Dungeons and Dragons stream uh, yesterday so I'm actually part of uh, their stream every weekend when we do them on Saturdays when did I start drawing a long 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 time ago um I've been drawing for like most of my childhood but I didn't really start getting better until the last couple of years because I've been really putting in the the study time to practice and to do the pictures I really wanted to draw that I always told myself I would when I got better but better doesn't exist because you know obviously the the what's it called um the expectation of how good you should be before you do something keeps growing as you get better so eventually it gets to a point where you just it's impossible to reach it so I'm just doing the pictures while I want to do them okay I want this to like all come up around the edges because it's creepy. It's going to be coming off of Gabranth specifically as well, so I could actually attach it to him. Dinner glasses change your voice. What? <laughs> um, I do. I have. I own glasses, but I don't generally wear glasses. Uh, I only use them when I'm playing a high uh, frame rate game. Generally, because my my eyes, I have uh, I get eye strain. So, if you got consumed by it, can you get rid of it completely? No. If you're consumed by it, you are gone. Uh, basically, that's that's just the end of it. Um. So the group that that all had these, they knew the risks when they started. Uh, each one of them, some of them use it. 
because they they like the power they get from it. Some were scared of it. That was Gabranth. He was scared of his. So, um, unfortunately, because these things take the emotions from their owners as well, like, you'll have some that will excel um, in certain traits way, way better because they've learned from their host. And other ones that will come with a trait that you probably don't really want this thing to have. For example, like, um, Gibranth is scared of his. So, the, the problem with him being scared of his is it is also scared of him. It's shadowing the exact same fear that he has. And when you're so scared of something because you feel like it could take over at any second, sometimes it also gets violent. Um, and the way I had Gabranth actually meet his wife is his shadow did exactly that. Uh, it ended up attacking him and he got seriously injured because of it. And then his wife found him. Um, this was before they were husband and wife. She brought him home and she was just like, holy crap, this is a really hot guy um, and I like him. And then she decided to just show him around in Alvin City and eventually she proposed. Because there's no way in hell he could propose because he's Gibranth and very, very, very awkward. He was not the one to initiate the first kiss either. She did that too. I thought she did it despite her father. <laughs> the awkwardness of characters that I have. For some reason, every stream I want to mention Gerald or the Beach Boy. <laughs> I like that kind of thing. I'm terrified of contacts. Yeah, no, I could not see myself wearing contacts. Yeah, I'm very, like, I, I love putting all these tiny little things into my story, and I like to have reasoning as to why certain things exist and how they would function. Um... I also like to open those kinds of doors because they can lead to more interesting ways of solving a problem as much as they are creating a problem. Um, I also really want to get these kinds of stories out eventually a little bit more, but the amount of time I have, and unfortunately because I'm the only one doing all the graphics, they just can't come out as much as I want them to, and unfortunately they don't garner enough attention because I can't put them out regularly like most YouTubers can. But I can make these pictures, and these pictures are pretty, and they convey what I want in a single scene. I do really want to do one of uh, Gabranth and his wife hugging, because that was the happiest points of his life. That and when he was a little kid with his best friend, which was Seth, so. Did you just pick up that moving person and drop him? Oh yeah, I can do that. So, Kimiko, I can pick her up. I can drop her on the floor, um, I can right click her, when it loads, <laughs> I want her to crawl, there you go, she can crawl along the floor, I don't know where Ethan, okay, Ethan's on the other screen for some reason, Ethan, what do we want you to do, um, can you please lie down, there you go, go to sleep, yes, plus to the hugging, lol? Um, so these are shimijis. Um, I don't think it's- no, it's not on here specifically. So this is- this is how it's- it's called. It's a shimiji. Um, I'll show you what the pictures look like in here. Kimiko's one's not finished, but this is Ethan's one. So I had to make each individual image of Ethan. Um, they do like lots of different little things. But yeah, I have a couple other ones, I just, I don't put them on. Ethan and Kimiko are my favourite ones to put on. I need to put Tama. I want a Tama one, and I want a Gabranth one, and a... There's too many characters I want, and I, had, I don't have time, so... He needs that sleep so much. <laughs> he does, right? I always have him tired in, like, my stories. He's just, like, always tired, and it's generally because he either gets ambushed in, like, the middle of the night, or Kimiko is an ass and won't let him sleep. So it's just like, yeah, he probably would be tired. He's also tired of all of her garbage that she puts him through because she is the world's biggest pain in the neck. Like me! I'm terrible. I am like, 
just like half of my characters. No, I don't want you to do that. Okay. You know what you should do? You should... Uh... Hmm. Good question. Yeah, sit down. There you go. Why did your tail disappear? Oh, you know, I'm not going to question things anymore. I'm just going to let it happen. Okay, I'm trying to... This has gone round in a circle like that. Then, yeah, no, they eventually would come around that way. But I think it would be more of an open, so it come around further, like that. I'm trying to keep the, the shape kind of similar. Okay, you probably, you probably should go to sleep at some point, Jax. It's not good to stay up too long. Does Ethan- Ethan does like Himiko. Um, she does not reciprocate. <laughs> because she likes manly men. Um, and Ethan is a boy. Not a manly man to her. He's like an annoying little brother. But she's also not the type to settle down. And Ethan is the type to settle down. But regardless, he's gonna stick around because he likes her a lot. She's the one who taught him how to look after himself and the middle of nowhere even if she gets some half killed on a regular daily basis get back up there I'm running away with my stuff i like my really weird dynamics with characters i put characters which personalities wouldn't really work together and make them work together because <laughs> it's fun You'll sleep soon after you've had breakfast. Why? Well, I mean, at least you won't go to bed hungry. I think Kimiko needs to cut back on the alcohol. She needs to cut back on a lot of things. Um, so Kimiko quite happily steals from people. Um, she's basically just Austin, but you know, with a bit more sense than Austin, and she's not as dumb. But yeah, no, she, she needs to cut back on her alcohol, she needs to stop picking fights with people, and she needs to stop stealing people's wallets. Okay, I think if I bring this around a bit more, when in doubt, just, just pull all of the colours. Yeah, I love talking about story stuff. It's just so much more- like, there's so many things you can delve into with one character and it's just super fun and engaging for me, so I love doing it. See, it looks cool because now you got like that in-between colour, but it's- it's like the background, obviously, but it looks cool. Kimiko is like, don't- I don't like you at first, but then- but you grow on me. Lol? Yeah, Kimiko is kind of like that. Like, she didn't intend on um, spending time at all with Ethan, but Kaizen had sent him her way, and she thought his power was interesting. So she's like, okay, I'll give him a week, and then, like, he'll probably want to leave because the way she does everything is really not based for teamwork at the slightest. But he stuck around. And then she eventually just sort of got used to him being there. And if he's not there, she's like... She kind of gets upset about it now. So they're a duo that can't separate, but at the same time shouldn't be able to function together. <laughs> same can be said with um, Tama and uh, like half part of the group that they, they have. Because like you've got like Tai and everything, and as much as they find Tai annoying, um, there's no way that their group could work without him. So each character kind of has a purpose as to why they're there, etc. And it, it all all comes to like a, a greater useful purpose. Everyone's skill is appreciated and valued because it's genuinely, genuinely useful and they can work as one big team. And I love that. I like the idea of like no one person can fix everyone's problems. It has to be, it has to be a group effort. Otherwise, it all falls. If it falls on one person's shoulders, one person can't do everything. 
So having a bunch of people, they're all going to have their own strengths, and those strengths are going to be useful. So you got to put them to use, and it's just awesome. There was a scene I wanted to do uh, where you had uh, Tama and Kaizen assisting each other in one fight. Um, I still really want to animate that one day. That'll be great. And then you also had, like, while Tom is trying to hold someone up with, like, his telekinesis, you got someone come behind and then, you know, they get taken out by, um, uh, Ty with his stinking soccer ball. I, I still can't believe I just gave him a soccer ball as a weapon. I'm just like, this is good enough. And then, actually, he would probably be the world's biggest asshole afterwards and just be like, Tama, Tama, look, I did good, right? Right? And just wait until he gets validation from him. It'd annoy him until he gets... Yeah, it'd be annoying him until he gets validation from him, rather than if. Learning with bit of trash. Yep, you learn some great things when you delve into the, to a trash can, right? <laughs> I am not telling people to start going dumpster diving, but... Okay, I actually like how that looks. It's kind of cool. See, look how empty it looks without them there. Like, you really need them there to pull in that, like, scary, closed-in, claustrophobic, almost, like, feel. Ethan, sorry, I'm gonna move you because you're in the way of my brush. And I need it. So, I'm gonna put a couple more in here. I'm trying to, like, keep it sparse to start with. And then I'm gonna put some purple in. Uh, and mix the purple in. And then I'm gonna put the painting back over here and there was a fireplace behind him I'm gonna do that just so I can put the color variant behind him just to make it look a little bit brighter the soccer ball is potentially awesome yeah the the fun thing I had with the soccer ball is because I wanted to have um I wanted everything of him is based on competition and a game so of course he'd be using something like a soccer ball because it's essentially like a toy and a sport, a very competitive one. Um, but it's also a magical one, so I can play with it. It's an elemental soccer ball. So if you kick it really hard, really fast, it'll be fire-based. If you hold on to it for an extended period of time, it'll be ice-based. Um, and I hadn't really gone over any other ones that I wanted for it. I eventually wanted it to do, like, um, earth-based attacks and stuff, but of course they would have modified the crap out of it as well. So it would have been doing, um, some really interesting looking, like, attacks and stuff. I basically give- I give my characters one quirk, run with the quirk as far as I can get it, and then normalize a lot of the other stuff that they have. This one lit soccer ball. I know, right? I would totally play with that soccer ball. But I wouldn't want to kick it if it's icy because I feel like I'd break my foot. I remembered when that Overwatch artist drew a brown. Yeah, um, Trent. He's, uh, he's a Blizzard artist. And he's actually one of the reasons why I changed my drawing style so much. So he got me into digital painting. And he got me into... Uh, wanting to improve like he actually did a paint over of one of my my pictures like ages ago and I got really excited and I wanted to draw like all of these really cool pictures like him so he's very very much one of my big inspirations and he made that for me for Christmas um, because of Andy it's really 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 sweet I have it framed it's on my desk like I absolutely love it so it was also the first time I had a realistic-ish looking picture of Gabranth that I could reference from. So that helped me learn faces a lot. So I actually drew... I'll grab the, the picture I did. Um, this one. It's gonna take a minute to load because there's a big thing already up. But I actually started learning how to draw Gabranth's face a lot better than when I first started. And without even thinking, it ended up looking very similar to the face that Trent drew um so I was like super super proud of myself for that 
I spent ages learning how to draw damn abs. Yeah, it'll take a while to load. I am so sorry. All of my pictures are big, and my computer is not very big anymore. It's a kind of eh computer. Marshall. Weird non art related question. Have you uh, ever thought of. Nope, I do. N okay, fur babies count. I want a dog. That's it. I don't need anything else. I already have my children, these these OCs, and their their life and my work is my, my children, and that's it. I don't really need anything else or have time for anything else, I suppose. Do you have a story for Kimiko's parents? Uh, Kimiko's parents and, like, most Nico- I actually have, like, a whole thing for the entire race that they have, because they're very cat-based. Also, this is the picture I drew. Look at him! He's lovely! So many people go to this meetup next week. Yeah, we got like, um, over, like, f maybe 15 or something people going? I can't remember. Anyway, um, yeah. So look at his face! I drew that face! I did it! Look at it! It's great! I am proud of that face. And those abs. And chest hair, because Pi reminded me I needed to draw chest hair, or Pi was not happy about the head cannon that they had. OCs are literally like your children. Yeah, they are, right? Like, I, I look after them. They only exist because of me. Um, I get to decide their future without someone telling me that I'm ruining them my child's life. <laughs> yeah. I love all of my OCs a lot. They're a very, very big part of my life, and they were my friends when I didn't have any. So, like... They mean a lot to me. Who needs real children? I don't know, right? I just need a dog. I want a dog, and then I've got Andy. So if I have Andy, a dog, and my OCs, that's like the best recipe for my happiest life ever. That's all I need. And then I've already got like a nephew and two nieces. I cannot count on my fingers, I swear. So I've got I've got enough children in my life. I'm happy, so. Plus, I can, I can watch these children grow up, and they get older than me, and they can live out their happy life and their story, and I can continue mine, so... Yeah. <laughs> you have 80 fish babies. <laughs> That's a good amount of fish babies. I'm trying to figure out if I want to fix his nose. I feel like I need to move the nostril bit up a little bit, so I'm just gonna grab this copy it and then just just oh no it's loading <laughs> no why photoshop is there a specific re oh yeah we're in a rented place at the moment because we can't afford uh, a house so um we have to wait until we can have a house and then we can get a dog and then i'm getting a samoid or a shiba or a corgi one of those three and I will be very happy, and so will Andy, because we really want a dog. You have a kitten and a doggo. Oh, they're so cute, right, though? Like, dogs are the best. Dogs are always happy to see you, and, like, you could have the world's, like, worst day, and then the dog will just sort of be there, and it'll smile at you, and it'll wag its tail because you want to pat it, and it's just like, yeah, master, you did a good, and I love you, and that's the best thing ever. And they're so innocent, too. Like, they're not going to judge you based on anything. They don't care if, if you don't have a million subscribers. <laughs> they would just sit there and be like, I love you, master, because you're you, and I love you, and it's great. Not any. <laughs> Who the hell can afford a house these days? I know, right? It's just bees. I need a house so I can have a dog. I don't really care if I had my own house. I just want the dog. That's the only reason for buying a house. Dogs are also great. Like, what was it? I read somewhere that like, it's a there's a chemical reaction that literally makes you happy when you pet a dog. How great is that? Dogs were literally made to be like the perfect companion 
to make you happy best thing ever don't need anything else the world just just doesn't need anything other than dogs if a dog ran for president i would vote for the dog the dog should run for president i think that'd be great actually i would completely live in a country run by dogs do you guys ever make characters and then end up losing count of how yep <laughs> okay so a lot of my children have been abandoned <laughs> I'm terrible for that. Oh, that just reminds me. I forgot I was talking about Kimiko's parents. Um, so I actually had like this whole story idea uh, for how the Nico folk actually like run. So most of the time, most Nico children are, uh, and yes, uh, these were named long before I was, I was just like, just got into weeb. So they were called Nikos and are staying that way. Um, but yeah, so the Neko folk generally kind of just abandon their children because they're wanderers. They go from place to place, they don't really want to settle anywhere, um, except for like a, a small few of them will generally stay somewhere, but the majority kind of just wander from town to town. So quite often you'll see like young Nekos without any parents. Um, that's why there's three of them that got adopted by Kaizen. You have too many Nico females. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think you can have too much of, like, one kind of thing, to be honest. You can have an entire story just based around, like, animal children. I'm gonna have to drag this all the way down, I think. I've gotta have it hit this, and then there's gonna be, like, a really bright light where it hits to stop it from actually... So you can see like the force field around it, um, which is keeping him safe. And this will have significance later on as well, which is nice, so. Amy, do I sing? Only to myself when I am listening to a music that I like way too much and I know no one else except Andy can hear me. I just changed into my workout stuff and unintentionally cosplayed Kimiko. I approve. <laughs> uh, to be honest, like, I've got, um, how many characters do I have? I have at least 70 OCs, um, and a ton of them don't have stories fleshed out or anything, or just, I don't find them as interesting to draw, so I don't. And then you've got the ones that get too much, so like, it was a point where all I drew was Carrot. I did not draw any of my other OCs, including Ethan. I didn't draw him very much when I started my YouTube channel. And now him, his dad, and and their, their group is like all I draw. I gotta draw more Carrot because I actually found out people missed him and it was really, really touchy. <laughs> Because I didn't think people really missed him that much, and then I got people got so excited when I drew him, and it like gave me like a, I don't know, I like had like a teary eye there. It was just so nice. I gotta draw relic too, just because relic is everyone's cinnamon bun, and if I don't draw relic, people get sad. I just saw the word lolly somewhere and almost replied him. Sigh. I mean. I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> I love to sing, but I sound like a dying chicken. Oh, I'm sure you don't sound bad. Like we all, we're all gonna start out like not professional level, obviously. Um, that's why you start taking lessons if you want to do something professionally. Or you practice lots, but it's really hard to know what you're practicing when you're trying to do it without lessons. Do I want to keep? No, I really. I know I do need want. Do need to want. I need to try and bring more of these shadows. I'm also gonna try and bring some up from here. But I've got to figure out how I'm gonna do that. This music is really like jazzy. Hello, sub. It's been a while. Speaking of singing, I am a songwriter. Oh, that's cool. And play like civic cheese. I cannot play a single instrument. Once I tried playing the penny whistle, I played it for like a year. 
I didn't actually know what I was doing in the slightest and then I kind of just forgot that it existed after that year. And I think I got- I did start playing the clarinet when I was in school. I did not like playing in school. It was not fun. What are you best at drawing? I'm best at drawing werewolf men. Um, I kind of just draw whatever. I'm not sure what I'm good at, actually. I mean, I get references now. I've just casually got one open there, but I'm not showing you what it is because it's just the most random thing. So it's going to stay there where no one can see it. Um, I think at the moment my favorite thing to draw, though, would probably be buff men. Because I, I like, I'm learning new bits of anatomy. And of course, you get really excited when you've learned something new and you just want to draw a lot of it. That's kind of why I stopped drawing Carrot uh, for a while, is because he didn't have... For learning purposes, his anatomy is terrible. Like, he's a chibi with no real proper proportions or bone structure. <laughs> so I couldn't really learn how to draw real anatomy from drawing Carrot. But he's fantastic for line of action and dynamic poses. So I'm going to be using him when I'm stu studying that. And then obviously while I'm just working on big emotional pieces, this works better. So it's, it's a good, like, I can jump between OCs and OC stories I have based on what I want to learn, which is really helpful, actually. <laughs> okay, I need to make, like, a smoky effect coming off Gabrant. Gab, why are you so sad all the time? Oh, okay, I answered my own question because I'm the one who did it, but... Yeah. Yeah, his shadow has no uh, form. Because he's not in control of it right now. There's a couple of characters that do. And I'm going to be really excited when I can like show them off, finally. But eventually I've got to do a bunch of designs. Because I also have to... There's a picture in his pocket watch, which i got to draw... Which I've put off drawing because I had to do it for one of the upcoming OC Chronicle episodes. And it's a picture of like 10 people, 9 people. Or 10 to 9 people. There's a lot of people to put in one picture for like a scene that's a split second. But no, I gotta do it, so I'll do it at some point. Nobody spoil it. Uh, can you please keep that out of, yeah, thank you. I'm still like emotionally broken from- no, please, I've, I've asked nicely, please keep the Athmal stuff off of here and, you know, if you're gonna talk about it, talk about it at their channel. You play guitar. <laughs> yeah, so what have you been doing, man? You're supposed to be good at this! <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm, please, 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 you know. You're supposed to enjoy yourself on streams. I'm not gonna like make you work. Let's see, you must be one of the most productive people ever. <laughs> yes, everyone should be proud of Sub right now. Okay, I'm gonna have. I want this to only have. Uh, the sharp lines. So it has the sharp lines as it's going up, but everything around him is just kind of like all over the place. And then I gotta have some come up through here. Uh, I really do love the window behind him. I'm really proud of the window. That was, that was like, I had no idea what to do for it before and it just looked like you can see it's, it's kind of like really bland before and now it's like Shumpf. I'm really happy with it. You've been sat in a chair working on a computer too much, what is it? <laughs> when you draw like chibi animations, how do you do the guys here? Um, I mean, the same way I draw the girls here, just short, I suppose. I should work for Ben. Oh? Nah, I'm, um, 
I don't know, my, I like to keep my streams like chill if I can. So I try not to like, there's not a lot of rules that I ask people to abide by, but like obviously there's, there's a couple that I just sort of prefer people try to keep by. One of which is like, the only reason I ask it is more out of respect. Like, I think most people should keep fandom based stuff based on where it, where it comes from. Because it's also nicer for the person who's made it to hear, oh, you know, I really love this thing on their channel rather than on someone else's. I've drawn so many pictures of Quilt with his shadow. I haven't shown them all, but like, I've drawn a lot. He's a very good, um. I was just like, fire, cool. Sorry. Um, yeah, he's a good emotional outlet. Because, like, you can kind of put yourself in his shoes for just how his emotion is, rather than obviously, like, the entire scenario. Put him back over here. Uh, I love that window. Yay, I'm really happy you like this. Do you think the change is for the better? Definitely. Um, so a lot of things that I would, was doing was like incorrect for very specific reasons. Like it's not technically incorrect in terms of like what I drew was still, it still looked nice. But the reasons that, that certain things was changed was there was too much detail. Why did I use the blur brush? No. Okay. I'll just put this over the top. So there was too much detail in the old one around Gabranth. Um, so what you ended up with was all of this information and it kind of covered him up so you couldn't see him very well. Whereas now there's just a big solid thing behind it so you can clearly see in the thumbnail version that he's easier to see. Um, and Ethan looks a lot lonelier and trapped in like this, this one section where it's the only place where the light is hitting. So... That's pretty much like what was changed for the most part. Cause I'd never really done like, I didn't even think about doing a vertical uh, composition for this one. So it was a really good change and I'm really happy that I got the, um, the critique that I did for it. So I've been trying to get critique more so from the professionals who understand the, the technical part of why something is is incorrect or i guess not really is inc incorrect but what it could do to make it pop more um and make it feel more real and how to convey the story better and stuff like that oh the size of this canvas uh five by or is it just a little bit of five point i can't english oh my gosh four thousand nine hundred and twenty by five thousand four hundred and twenty nine there we go. Now I can English. It's the only place the light is hitting. Whoa. Yeah, I like to experiment a lot with um, my lighting. So like, it, it's really good for setting a mood. And I, this one was really hard because the light source was coming from just one place, the window. And then I had to try and make him still stand out without popping out too much and him stand out without him feeling like he's in control of the situation so like it was kind of a really hard one for me to to get used to but okay I really would like to um pull more I think down here These like shadows are really gonna be pushing because at the moment this kid is in their way and if he's gone Gabranth had nothing left whatsoever and it would be able to get control because he would not have a reason to do anything anymore so everything here is done with intent obviously like there's some things that um I'll draw just for the sake of drawing a picture, so you don't really get as much intent in it. But these pictures make you feel something, and I think that's why I just like them better. 
love to challenge yourself. Yes, I do. I'm trying to learn as much as I can so that I can make pictures that people can look at once and feel exactly what I wanted to convey with it. Or find something that's like, I guess they can, can um, relate to with some of this artwork. Why is Cabran so sad? Um, <laughs> I don't know if people want me to explain it again, but um, his wife died the day before this picture. Because I'm the world's loveliest person, Tumway OC is just like everyone else. You feel scared looking at this. Good, I'm happy. Okay, that sounds terrible. Oh my gosh. I, I shall rephrase that. <laughs> I'm happy that it, it gets the idea across. <laughs> I'm just like awful cheese. Okay, I don't want it hitting this, this piece. Because this... I'm, I think I wanted to make this go up more. My, it's kind of like a curtain and it follows the shape actually around the outside of the curtains there. It's kind of cool. It's like a teardrop. Yes. Ever looked at your old art and everything's bad? I do it often. I've actually gotten into a habit now of finding an old picture and redrawing it and trying to figure out what the best composition could have been for that picture because I'm trying to really think about what my art could be if I was to do it now. You should draw an OC graveyard. Um, no, because it'd be spoiler territory for everything. Like, cause some of my, some of my fans really like certain characters of mine. Um, and I don't want to tell them which of these characters would die in, in the stories that I put them in. You pluck the happy ones so much with him, eh? Yeah, um, so what what I normally do with each one of my characters is certain characters are made specifically to be able to break tension in, in specific moments. Like, if Ethan's sad and, like, say, Ethan, Kimiko, and Gabranth are all in the same place, and Ethan is sad, he's not very happy about, like, a scenario that's going on, um... Kimiko is more than likely going to be able to diffuse that situation by saying something ridiculous or doing something ridiculous. Um, and like, to be honest, even Kaizen. Kaizen is serious when it comes to like battle stuff and things like that. But if you actually have Kaizen just with the other parts of the group, he's basically like everyone's dad. So he looks after all of them. Um, but he'll also put himself in harm's way if it's going to protect them, which is bad dad trait. Don't do that. But he do that anyway because I wrote him that way. Oops. Give my characters just like accidental death wishes. <laughs> dad friend Kaizen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like specifically I don't I don't just kill off characters unless it has a purpose, because obviously there's no point just killing off a character. And if too many characters die all at one time, I'll be honest, it makes no sense. And you kind of lose the value of the character's death. So a character dying should benefit, not well not really benefit, but it should change the characters that are still there. Their, their last moments should have some kind of meaning to the characters that have just like been left behind. So, like, if Gabranth was to die now, it would be pointless for Ethan because he's finally found his father again and they didn't reconcile before he died. But if his last act of being a dad was uh, saving Ethan and he died doing so, that would be a reconciliation. But it would feel like the payoff kind of sucks because they can't reconnect after that because he's been dead. So... Like, that's, that's like, why you gotta be careful who you kill off and why. And it also depends on how they're killed off, because if they get killed off in a really dumb way, then you're kind of just like, well, that could have just been avoided. It didn't really need to happen that way at all. So I've been very, very specific on which characters that I would kill off, um, when they'd be killed off, why they would be killed off, and who their last moments would be four. 
So they're all things like, there's, there's an insane amount of stuff you gotta think about with writing. So like, I haven't just been trying to get better at art, but I've been trying to get better at uh, understanding, I guess, at least a little bit of psychology. Um, to understand how to write my own characters better and be true to their reactions to the situations that I want to put them in. And it's interesting as well, because like, you can write a bad character, like, they don't technically have to be perfectly moral, you can, you can write a bad moral character, and they can still end up as a character that a lot of people relate to or love. Like, Bojack Horseman is a terribly, terribly annoying, well, if you were next to him, he'd be an annoying butthole. He's not a nice person. But at the same time, he's a good character, and you actually understand a lot of what he goes through in the series. And that's just... it's cool. It's like, that that's the thing I love about writing, like, you can... you can relate to a lot of characters. You might not like the character, but you can relate to a character, and the more you relate to a character, the more you tend to like them or dislike them because of that reason. Like, I don't like um, Diane from Bojack much, but it's because I have a similar thought process to Diane and I hate that. Because <laughs> I know how stupid it is when I see somebody else do it and I'm like, uh, damn, that's me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing to go through. You just don't really watch Bo Bojack Horseman is, um, you can't binge it. It's very depressing if you binge it, but it's a good series, so I'd suggest like you 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 look at it later. So villains more often, yeah, exactly. So a good villain doesn't just kill for the sake of killing. There's normally like a reason that they do stuff, and they generally believe that what they're doing is the right thing. Um, I guess there's a difference generally between like a, a good villain. Um, versus like the typical comical villain so just killing people because you know is kind of just a it's a very overused uh story type at this point so i guess it doesn't really have the same kind of appeal that it used to when you had like movies just coming out with a with a bad guy in it back in the day so like i've got a couple of characters that um I kind of like wrote them one way and then as I've learned stuff I've changed their motives and there was actually a problem I had with Ethan. Ethan was a, a poor protagonist when I made him because unlike all of the other OCs that I made when I made them years later they all had a purpose whereas Ethan didn't really have one when I made him because I made him just because I wanted a character. You've heard of that cartoon. Thought it was a 90s cartoon. <laughs> no, um, Bojack Horseman is a recent cartoon. The latest season was put out last year. Um, so that was season five. It's based on... The, well, the original premise of the show is basically like a, a dude who was in a 90s sitcom that was very popular. And you follow his life events years after that that series has, has been and gone. So he's kind of like a washed up movie star at that point. Um, there's a lot of satirical humor in it and there is, it's obviously for adults, so I can understand if your parents don't want you watching it yet if you're a little bit younger. Um, I'd suggest like checking it out when you're older. Or you know like if you, you really really want to watch it, you could ask your parents to watch it first and then you know like ask them if you could watch it with them or something like that because at least then if you don't understand something they can either tell you or decide you know from from there that it's not a very good show for you etc they stole the hollywoods <laughs> they did <laughs> and then they changed the name afterwards to hollywood <laughs> it's like my favorite thing from that it's just so dumb <laughs> yeah bojack horseman is very depressing so this is one of the series that I, I got really interested in psychology and characters and how people think and feel um, because it's very true to life, that series. Okay, I feel like I got too much of these shadows, so I'm gonna cut a few of them off a little bit. I'm gonna...
I don't want like too much otherwise it's just gonna whoops it's really hard to get composition down sometimes I think Amy would hug yeah if I was to hug okay um do any characters have pets and okay the one that I was gonna answer first which OC would you hug of yours if I was to hug any one specific OC as much as I love Gabran if I could only pick one it would be Carrot even if he doesn't want to hug me back it would be Carrot because he was a very 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 big part of my life um when I moved to Australia so Teresa had okay so pets um so Teresa has a spider um I did want to give Gabrant a pet but that didn't really I'm still kind of figuring out if I want to do that or not yet Ethan used to have a pet uh he had a small pet wyvern which his parents got him which he called Thwiff which I when I first made him that was literally what I wanted him to have was just like a dragon pet but obviously Kaizen's the last dragon and drag he's not a pet so I had to make it a wyvern um so yeah even <laughs> carrot emoji yeah relic is your favorite of the three I know, a lot of people really like relic I can understand why he's just adorable um I love him for multiple reasons one he's he was inspired by one of my favorite games at the time uh which was journey i loved that game it was really really good so i used to i used to play that a lot even though i'd already beaten it multiple times i just really enjoyed the the journey which was the point of it but they had these like characters they were completely black uh, and they wore like this this rogue thing and they'd go through a desert and i wanted relic to be a character that went looking for all of these really old books in the middle of nowhere um and he didn't speak just like they did so he was completely silent and he carried around one magic book which has all the spells in it that he usually used and then he eventually met carrot and zero and the only reason he did is because i drew carrot and zero together a lot then i started drawing relic in there but they went from the same story originally so everyone's just like relic joins this story right and then I was just like, yes, yeah, he does now. <laughs> so it's canon. <laughs> when you can't find a carrot emoji. <laughs> Do you ever want to kill your OCs because you hate them or their personalities? <laughs> um, no, I don't think I've ever wanted to kill off one of my OCs. I love them all for like some of the dumb traits they have. Like, even the bad guys, um... There's a bad guy in Ethan's one who I don't, like, I don't favor him a lot um, compared to, like, some other characters. Uh, but I like the concept for him, so I'm quite happy to keep him. I don't know if I'll kill him off yet. I probably will, maybe. I don't know. There's more than one, so you guys won't be able to tell which one I'll be talking about. And then, like... There's characters that kind of just get forgotten about a little bit more because uh, they didn't have the same kind of pull to me that certain other ones did. Uh, no, I don't like that. Nope, 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 nope. Go back, go back. These shadows are frustrating to get in the right place because I've got to try and push them up to go into the perspective there to... I was for a relic game. I wish. I like I honestly would love to make a game, but I can't make one by myself. Um I don't have the time to program anything and I don't have the time to do all of the graphics by myself. So yeah, it's a struggle. One day when I'm like a billionaire and I'm just like, oh yeah guys, I'm a billionaire now, I can I can just go and make people make my games for me. 
pay people like way too much money for a really crappy game that only I can play. <laughs> Will I kill them off, Amy? You were the one asking this. <laughs> Look, okay, I'm. I know I'm bad for this, but come on. I feel like on stream it looks a lot darker than it does on my screen. My screen must just be really bright. Maybe. I feel like it is. Uh, what would you do with a million dollars, Amy? Roll a game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's literally that. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, there's so many things I want to make. Um, I would want to finish OC Chronicles. I would love to see if I could get, like, a proper episode animated. Or, like, I'd... You know what? I'd pay people to teach me how to draw storyboards properly. That would be that would be amazing. I could teach, then I could do that, and then I'd get other artists to, to show me how to uh, animate better. I would literally just use this for self improvement. I just realized, <laughs> and then I'd like hire out their skills and just ask them to draw. I'd, I would buy a million dollars worth of fan art. There we go. I've sorted it. I could never afford to buy artwork from other artists, so I always just draw my own. I think that's another reason why I just learned how to draw my OCs, is because I was like, I can't afford artwork from other people, so I'll just do it myself. <laughs> okay, if I do that, and then like squish, squish these in. I'm trying really hard to make this look decent so I can make the top part dollar so that'll be right well <laughs> like I'd like um I really would like to have more fan art of my OCs I'm obviously not going to just ask people to draw me fan art because it's not really fan art if you have to ask for it, or at least it's, I guess it's how it feels. I want people to get like excited and want to draw my OCs um, because they just enjoy or they resonate with them. I got some cool story ideas actually that I want to do at some point as well. Some that would be specifically good for like just games and then others that would be good for like a full-blown story and stuff. I've already gone through the notion of like trying to do them on other stuff like Minecraft etc but because of the way I have all my characters so diverse um like size wise etc I can't really do that in Minecraft you would not get the full experience of how great Tama is um if he was reduced to Minecraft blocks. <laughs> I think I would like I'd be very upset with that, actually, because it's just like, Tama, no, you were supposed to be chubby. Aw. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, like, um, it's really hard to get over the idea that your art is not good enough. As much as people will tell you opposite, like, just, just know that no matter what you make, you put a lot of effort into it, you should be proud. Um, this is something I am trying to tell myself as well. Um, and if it's for somebody else, whatever you make them is amazing because you put time into it and the fact that you spent time on someone else is absolutely amazing and you should be very proud of that. Even if it's like joke art, it's still great and that's amazing. Probably look, what look better in high tail? I don't actually know if any of my stuff would look good in that either. To be honest, all my characters are like they gotta be buff, man. If they're not buff, it's not good enough. <laughs> that was nice advice. Yeah, you should be proud of your work. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to keep myself up to that kind of thing. It's really really hard to um to keep positive when there's a lot of negative around. I think that's another reason why I like drawing my pictures. My old art. Okay, let's go through the horrible time machine. That is 2016. <laughs> what?
We'll open... What month is it? Is it snow? It's May. We're gonna go into May in 2016. Um... Oh gosh. Let's pull out a sketch, shall we? Um, so this is Butch. I think he was one of my OCs. I honestly don't remember. Butch looks a little, um... Flat. <laughs> His arm is broken. <laughs> but this exists. <laughs> what else have we got in this folder, actually? I'm curious. There's a chibi here. Uh, a butch. Who's the other one? Okay, so this is butch, um, coloured. I don't know who this is. I just, I remember she was psychotic. I think that's the only thing I remember from what I had her character as. Is it Coin. There's like a really old grayscale. I think this is Mungo. Was this Mungo? Oh gosh, this looks terrible. Oh gosh. Well, there you go. You can see how terrible time travel is. What happened to Butch's arm? Oh, I think I don't. I only gave him one arm. I think. When you Mungo. Yeah, this is from a stream. Um, Andy used to do Dungeons and Dragons like long before uh, we were a couple, so it was like then. This is such casual, just great day on terrain here. Yeah? What is this stuff? Oh my gosh, look, there's an Undertale picture! Oh, I was so hyped for Undertale back then. What on earth have I done to your fingers? That's not how you fingers. This is great. I'm literally just gonna tell everyone, like, I'm, I've, I'm very proud. I've learned a lot, obviously. I mean, if it's not obvious, then there's a problem. <laughs> oh gosh, there's one I did of Moika. I think this is when we just started becoming, like, friends. So, you must have had some... Yeah, I think I've got something that I that you commissioned me for. Let's see if we can delve deep into this terrible rabbit hole. Um, oh wait, even better. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to type in sub. Oh gosh. This, okay, bad idea. I just got stuff that's for um, everything else. Is there one in here? I don't even remember what I used to draw here. Oh, this is where back when I was doing level up and I was like drawing buildings. Wow, this is a terrible building. I'm actually kind of proud though. Like I painted that. That was for a page. One whole page of a comic that got finished. I haven't seen any of your stuff yet. <laughs> is it in April somewhere? I imagine it's probably like like 2017 more than this one. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, look! It's just Kaizen and Ronin! Oh gosh, that's a cool pose for Ronin. Why don't I draw those kinds of poses any- I'm gonna redraw this pose. Obviously better without such a huge thigh gap. How many years of art is piled in it? Oh, that's just one year. So, um, here we go. So, when I used to do these, uh, I would put the year, and then I would have all of the months separated. And I drew a lot. Um, there were some really good pictures in here, and then there were some terrible pictures in here. Oh my gosh, I got donuts! Oh my gosh, I remember making those donuts! I should draw more donuts! Pretty much anything more than two months ago is... <laughs> My art has changed so much. It's actually kind of insane. Um, it's really weird seeing old artwork now with what I what I know now. Oh gosh. Okay. Here's, okay. Here's a, a terrible, um, <laughs> a terrible, terrible picture <laughs> of Caitlyn, um, which exists. Let's go into um. 2019. What have I got in January? Okay, yeah. So this was a, a face that I drew. Um, which exists. And this is what I drew this year. 
I think there's a difference, guys. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember being so proud of that picture, though. I was like... Oh man, look at Andy, I, I drew like this amazing picture and you can see every hair strand and she's like so detailed and then I learnt that I didn't know how the face worked at all, like in the, in the slightest. Whereas now I can draw like different aged faces and I can draw masculine and man, the brown looks pretty. I love her eyes though. I like Elena's eyes. <laughs> Munch the whole thing. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna. Now it's perfect. It's really not. That looks terrible. One day I'll paint over this and just do a new one. But jeez, the difference is great, right? Hair strands are hard. Generally, it's better not to. Uh, if you comp the hair better, it just it kind of looks nicer. Um, otherwise you just end up with everyone just looking at the hair because it's so detailed that it, it demands the focus of your attention. Uh, where did I say- Oh my- No! I am so happy that you said you love his nose. Do you know how many- I went like through a month or like more than a month trying to figure out how to draw his nose. And I still have trouble drawing his nose. So the fact you like his nose makes me very happy. Why a nose is awful? Nose is- terrible terrible things mine okay i don't mind my nose anymore because it stopped being a pain in the neck when it's hay fever season <laughs> it's like the only reason i hated it so much i really like this picture actually i was kind of in the middle on it uh before the change composition i think really adds to it so i'm kind of happier with it now I think it could probably be a little bit brighter, maybe, a little bit, um, but I don't want to make it too bright. I also think it's because i got two different screens, so I can never tell which one's good. I love his nose, <laughs> things only an artist can say. <laughs> Look, okay. <laughs> like, it's funny because, like, um, I went through a period where all I drew was chibis and Oh gosh, that exists. I'm not going to open that in the slightest. Uh, let's go back to 2014 in August because what have I done in August? Okay, no, that's a that's a pixel. Oh gosh, um, here's a chibi. Okay, so chibis did not have any kind of anatomy. They had giant uh, thigh gaps, no feet, no. <laughs> No hands or elbows? Elbows didn't exist, apparently. Let's fix it, okay? I'm just gonna quickly fix part of it and, and you know, put this on the background just so I, I don't have it terrible. We're just gonna fix a little bit of it. Where's my sketch brush? I want my sketch brush. Uh, Ethan, get out of the way. I'm trying to find my sketch brush. Where did my okay? Phew. Okay, so if you draw this bit, his ear can stay there. That's fine. He's like looking off into one side, so one eye is supposed to be smaller than the other, just a little bit. He has no nose apparently. Because I didn't know how to draw noses then. I also didn't know how to draw eyebrows or eyelids of any kind. Or center the mouth. These are things that I just didn't do. I think it's because I didn't know how to do it. Because I learned how to draw mainly from like watching anime stuff and anime is the simplified version of realistic stuff like this is actually just the eyelash uh shape that you get from like normal eyes you don't draw the extra stuff in it you'd also probably see like his teeth they would exist there and then he'd be 
he'd be leaning downwards, so he'd either have his face up or his face down. And if it's down, then his body is at the wrong angle. His body would be like moved back more, so it'd be more like like that. And that would probably be in the distance, rather than like... I do not know how I was going, like what I was actually trying to do with this picture. It doesn't make any sense for a pose to look like this. Yeah, it's like, it's so screwed up that I don't actually know how this pose was supposed to look. I think he was supposed to be jumping, which means like, I you can do his, his body facing forward, but his entire face would have to be moved upwards. So you'd see like the underside of um, the chin. <laughs> What's the oldest drawing I have? <laughs> running forward with one arm yeah like I have no clue what the hell he was doing <laughs> oh gosh okay wait wait where are we my oldest picture that I can find on my computer okay um I have a feeling it would be in my old laptop so old PC in there somewhere old laptop here we go getting into the good stuff um I guess in the, oh gosh, okay, so it's 2011. Uh, this is bunny character I drew. Oh, here we go. Here's an old picture, um, of Ruckus. <laughs> with his giant belt for a, I, I'm, I'm not removing that either. If I ever do any more with him, he's keeping that belt on. <laughs> I'm watching you draw because your drawings are amazing. Oh, thank you. Get ready to cringe. Oh, yes, it's, it's terrible. He looks like a box. Um, like, from from the looks of it, like, his ears, they're not in a terrible place, but they're not in a good place either. He's got a box. Like, he, look, it's a literal box. His arm is missing on the other side. Um... Because I think I did this, and then like you would have this, so the the fabric would have to go round it, but it can't. It doesn't exist there, and I did not. I did not draw like anatomy. I didn't know that there was a shoulder muscle that went like that, and that there was a bicep there, even though obviously it's the main one everyone remembers. So he should have looked like that. Not a box. <laughs> he still looks like a box because there's no shape. <laughs> that head though. <laughs> I love looking at old artwork. It's just really funny. Yeah, so that one, like, you could go two ways about it because you could also have it so that, like, the eyes are up here and then you've just got, like, the underside of the chip. I can never draw chibi chins because they're really weird shapes, so how the hell do you draw a chibi chin because it'd be you'd see the underside of the head here and then it'd just be the neck and then the neck is too small to support the giant head on the character and then this arm goes backwards i guess tries to there is no line of action for this i'm just gonna put his foot outwards instead and then put this one like Going, going backwards, I guess. Why is that arm? This arm should be moving forwards if you're gonna do, like... This just makes no sense. How the hell did I draw chibis with heads this big? have a little tiny hand over here because you know when it goes off into the distance and this one instead is just like 
Guys, look, I have a sword. It looks terrible, still. But I can't figure out any other way of making that pose work to some degree. Yeah, I, I, I always do that. It's just great. Show them my- oh gosh! Yeah, sure, let's go find my old Ronin picture. Um, was this the right one? No, that was in August. Oh gosh, this exists. That's, that's not anticipation, is it? I used to do these memes a lot, they're terrible ones. So that's 2014. Uh, the D drive, here we go, where's Ronin? Ronin, you exist in here somewhere, right? No, that's an odd comic page. <laughs> so I guess he's somewhere in here? There it is, I found it! Ronin the box! Oh my gosh. While we look at the box version of Ronin, I'll find the one I did last year. I think it was at the end of last year. No, it was November. I did not draw very much at the end of last year. I was too busy. Oh, I forgot about that picture. Here we go. So Ronan went from um a box. This <laughs> he went he went from a box to a man <laughs> who's too long. <laughs> it's still broken. <laughs> Fixing shadows to let me insult past me. All right, this is good fun. His arms are needles. <laughs> yeah, I did not know how to draw um box to man. Uh, I, this one still has, like, anatomy issues to some degree, um, but he looks nice enough where you can kind of get away with it, uh, so one day I'll get to a point where I can fix that, but I like his face. He's got a nice face there. I should put his coat back on, though. I really liked his coat. Also, why on earth did I tear his pants up so much back then? <laughs> They have an issue with just like, I didn't draw wrists either, like wrists don't exist. Like he has no wrist here. Like his, they're like, they're like bear paws. And then, oh my gosh, like he would actually, okay, if you were to put like a realistic thing on here, look how much smaller it would suddenly become. It would suddenly become like really small in comparison. <laughs> His head would have to be drawn, like, way bigger. <laughs> the edge was real back then. I know, right? And then, like, um... <laughs> I don't think I even want to mention this. Just, just, just the legs here. I don't know. I love looking at this old stuff. It's just funny. Obviously, like, this... It's, <laughs> I can't fix this because it's out too far. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, if current... If, if, if past me could see current me, I think one, she'd think that I'm a horribly mean person. <laughs> he has lost some weight. Oh, that's true, right? <laughs> yeah, past me would think current me is a horrible person who's very judgmental. <laughs> it's just like, please, past me, fix the problems of your artwork. And then it'd take me another, like, 20 years before I'm like, yeah, you know what, I will fix the problems I've got with my artwork. <laughs> I wanna- I'm trying to figure out, do you reckon I should make- maybe move these in closer? Or... I do kind of need them to move in if I want them to hit the butterfly, though. Hmm... I got the blue behind Ethan, which I can put a butterfly in there too. I can actually put a couple, make them look really pretty. It's just uh, one butterfly. Put another one in here. His mom's safety charm that keeps him safe. Isn't being judgmental and everything. Yeah, pretty much. The two small anime characters. Oh yeah, these are my, my two OCs. This is Kimiko and this is Ethan. Can we call? Please just, you know, um, sit somewhere. 
Yeah, there you go. Past you would be very proud, yeah. I think past me would be quite happy with where current me is. Also the fact that current me can write a story that's not just the exact same premise over and over like every one of my old stories. All of my characters are like just is basically just Ethan copied and pasted. I'm like, yeah, this is good. The ones at the top could go a bit lower. Yeah, I was looking at that, but I actually think it kind of pulls too much. So I'm in the middle at the moment on what I want to do with those. Um, I may end up cropping it a little bit, but I also want to give enough room for the for this. So I might actually put a, like another design up here further um, with like you know maybe like pretty butterfly wings or something, and it all goes to the top of the window piece. So I could do that. Oh, damn, I just realized, it looks like a potion. Cool. I did that unintentionally. I'm quite happy about that. Are you planning on watching Detective Pikachu? Um, ah, uh, I don't think so. I don't know, actually. I might watch it just, just for curiosity's sake. Uh, and no, I can't put a butterfly on Gabranth, um, because it would ruin its story reasons. So, there's a reason why, um, these shadows can't come past this, like, barrier piece. And if Gabranth had a butterfly on him, uh, the shadows wouldn't be able to do anything with him either. So, it would kind of, like, yeah. I have thought, literally, I thought about ridiculous amounts of detail as to why everything could and wouldn't or shouldn't work. I'm just like, okay, this minute tiny detail that no one will ever actually see or know, I've made it because why not? I love these guys too much. I think that's my problem. I don't want to make anything too much more darker either. Maybe I should make something brighter a little bit. So I'm gonna just quickly check something. Um, Oh, you yeah, know, he did have it going over through there, so he left a small piece open. Um, sorry, this is um, the critique that I got, so... Every now and then I check it just to see what I can, uh, can do with my stuff, like what I could improve on. It's good critique, I'm kind of happy about it. So I do want a butterfly in here. Um, I feel like I might actually put a couple somewhere. Just smaller ones than the, the big one at the top. And this would be... I do want to work it into the design a bit more, so it's just less of a in-your-face one. Uh, yeah, no, don't give any spoilers to, like, the any movies that have come out. And no, I haven't watched Endgame and I haven't seen Infinity Wars because I don't have a lot of free time. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to see the Sonic movie ever. Because I love, I absolutely love Sonic. Like, um, that's just something that I do really like and I don't generally tell people I like. But that movie is just, even if they change how he looks, it's just, why did they ruin Sonic? Why everyone's just like thinks it's a PR move now, which I mean I could see that actually being a thing, but <laughs> Sonic movie looks terrifying. Yeah, pretty much, right? They also didn't go with like any of the cool story points they could have gotten from the comics. I wouldn't bought one of the comics because I got so like pepped up for it because there's just a point where I'm like oh my gosh this thing happened I'm so excited and I want it to like do cool stuff do I need to make this I swear I'm like still in the middle on if it needs to be brighter now it's smaller than my preview because on the stream it looks a lot darker than it is Oh yeah, I know, right? Um, seeing Jim Carrey again. I haven't seen him act in something in ages. So it's just really cool to see him pop back up because he's like one of my favorite actors. Oh, I didn't realize I could use this brush for this. 
Please don't crash on me, Photoshop. I think Photoshop crashed. If it crashed- Damn it, no! Photoshop, why? Time, time to reopen photo- That's the only problem with that brush. It does it every time I use that brush. Yeah, I did save. If so, it should be fine. We just casually watch everything reopen. Until then, look, here's um. Oh, never mind, we got it. Ignore that. That was a reference shot that I need for later. Um. And we'll go back into. Was it in here? Nope, oh, it's not in here, it's in April, where I was. Here we go. Oh damn, now I lost my, my reference thingamajiggy. <laughs> ben, yeah look, okay, I was, I was playing a game, I needed a reference. Shush. <laughs> well, I actually, I, I'm not gonna lie, okay. So, the reason, there is one specific reason I wanted this reference. No joke. And it is because of this shape on his dang arm. That is literally it. Because you can see this muscle through there and this crease. And I never draw this crease because I forget it's there. Also, the way that it just folds like this, like, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It just looks good. And, like, I mean, his shoulder could be, like, Gabranus and just be really big. But it's not. Actually, that's the point. He's got really small shoulder joints. That means, like, he's only ever done, like, building for the bicep. So he probably only just lifts weights there. He's not. Doing like a full shoulder workout. Too many things to think about. Also, I needed it as well because um, I was trying to draw pant folds. And I don't know how pant folds for dudes because I'm not one. So I kind of need references to do that. Many references. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, he's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much just that. Yeah, I'm trying to learn like a lot of stuff. And unfortunately, to learn a, a lot of specific stuff, I need to be able to um, see good references for it. Sometimes you'll get a reference, and with the way that the human body is, you can't often just see those defined muscles. So you actually forget that they exist in a lot of cases. Like, uh, for a slender female, I don't have any defined muscles, uh, so you basically don't see them. And same for like when you look at anime girls, they often don't have a really fit anime girl with buff arms. Um, unless they draw them like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I do wish, um, I really do wish they had used different people for, like, VAs sometimes for characters. Because, like, there's some really, really good VAs out there for, um, that are, like, perfect for a character, but they're just... I can understand at the same point why a company uses a famous celebrity. So I kind of understand where both sides of the coin are. Okay, so these ones are lighter specifically because they have to contrast against this black over here. Except for when I'm drawing them on the same layer because that's not going to help anybody. <laughs> and I don't want this negative space. Uh, I need to sort of like put something in it. So, I'm going to put some of these. Hmm. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with this bit. I think if I move these shadows in so that it leaves a little bit up here, but not too much, then I should be right. Uh, all of my music that I use is from Epidemic Sound. I have their fix. <laughs> Everyone wants him to fix a lot of things. They didn't put his gloves on. They didn't give him the right shoes. They didn't give him the right, like, body proportions. And, like, he needs his oversized hands. He needs to have his eyes, like, if they're gonna split them, at least do it in the same style that they have always done it. Where it looks like his eyebrows come all the way down to meet in the middle. Um, and then he's supposed to have, like, the specific spike pattern at the back. And he's also got, like, very square pointy ears. Not square. Triangle. Duh, Amy. Why? 
you ever cried at your own creations? Yes. I'm a jerk to my own creation. I cry because I am mean and I know it. And I feel bad. <laughs> I think it's just like habit though. <laughs> Everyone like, like you obviously, you know what's going to make your story good. So you're going to do that first. And then you just feel bad that you did it. And you're just like, I'm a jerk. I do like be uh, being able to build my own stories though, because it means things that I didn't like from other stories uh, that I can't change. Um, I can just implement the stuff that I do like in my own, which is great. You can be creative. Look out, Ethan. I know you can't do anything, but you know, uh, look out. I swear I only put stream on so I can talk to myself and not sound crazy. I think that's the entire gist of the stream, right? Please don't ever stop doing like- Oh, I'm really, really happy that, like, you enjoy my stuff. I don't think I could stop. I've complained so many times <laughs> about, like, Stuff that I can't change, or can't fix, or can't do. Um, but I love art so much that I don't think it's physically possible for me to just give it up. That, and if I gave up my art, it means my characters couldn't smile or do stuff. And I couldn't have all those cute wholesome moments. Or like Hime putting a flower crown on Brom, like a crown that's like you'd give a king. <laughs> and he's just like made one as well just because he's just like my daughter deserves only the best flower crown with all these pretty flowers in it <laughs> I need these wholesome moments in my life it makes me happy so talking to half a hundred yay we're all well, okay I'm not gonna say we're all crazy because um, I'm not gonna assume uh, homes and what <laughs> Oh gosh. To be honest, like, uh, most video game movies that come out aren't good. They, they're really just, they're not good. Oh, it's so weird. I do feel like, for some reason, it feels like it's so much brighter on my screen. Alright, I'm gonna be back in a second. I'm gonna go grab my phone so I can take a photo of it. And then I can see what it looks like on my phone. Okay, got my phone. Now I can now I can see if it looks like what should I call it? If it's like too dark on my phone. I've hung around you guys for like four years. Yeah! I mean like I've known Andy for five almost six years now. And I've known like you've pretty much like been around for like a similar amount of time. Okay, let me see. So it does look dark ish. But it doesn't look too bad. It looks better than it does on like the other screen I have. <sighs> Why is it so hard to figure it out? This is the problem I have with like um trying to keep track of this kind of stuff. Cause like everyone's gonna have a different screen and then their screen will project colours differently and then it just becomes a mess. Yeah, but I'm viewing that on my other screen. <laughs> so it's like, it's still dark on my screen. I mean, it still doesn't look too bad though. I mean, so it's okay. <laughs> yep, I'm not suffering from insanity. I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yes, that is exactly how we should be. GG. I'll, I'll, check, it, I'll check it on your screen after, Andy. <laughs> Uh, it's okay to call us crazy, I mean, there's no such thing as a normal person. 
Yes, yeah, pretty much about right. You go back to Annie's channel after that. And Alessia's buff man. That's because I was doing the artwork. <laughs> Needs damn buff man. And then we found out a really weird word that just became even weirder. It looks so weird on my screen. It's like oil. I'm gonna make this a lot brighter though. Just make it purple. Whoa, look at that. I hope I took the one away from it underneath. Oh, that almost looks like a ghost. Cool. You know what, I'm gonna keep it uh, normal and then I'm gonna play around with the coloring on it. Like, if I do that, and maybe put, as it gets closer to the front, make it black. Like that. What do I use to animate? I use Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop, your one-stop shop for everything. <laughs> I swear, if like, if I couldn't use Photoshop, I think my art would just slowly die out because I would become like, unable to use anything else because I'm stubborn and I only like Photoshop. <laughs> Christ. I don't know why but I love how you pronounce certain words. Yeah okay so a lot of people don't know where my accent is from um because I keep getting asked this every now and then. So I'm actually a Kiwi. I am from New Zealand. Um that looks pretty. Okay, yeah, so I'm from New Zealand, uh, and I live in the UK at the moment. So people can't tell if I'm Australian, Kiwi, or British for some reason. <laughs> apparently they're like, to, to everyone in America, apparently those three kind of just sound similar. But for me, like, I can tell them all clearly apart. Every now and then I might get a, um, a New Zealander mixed up with British for some reason, even though we're very different. I mean, I could just hear my grandmother talking and, like, she got a really, really good New Zealand accent. Oh my gosh, and my niece. I have I have a niece who was brought up in Australia and another niece who's brought up in New Zealand. And hearing them talk is the best thing ever. Looks like the shadows are sorting the light around them. Oh, cool! Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to, um, trying to make it, like, pop more. But, yeah. Also, my music stopped, so now I'm gonna go and find the music again. Can, can you, you go work? No? Ha, ah, we did it. Okay, progress. I'm just gonna close a couple of things. Oh, okay, I fixed it, okay. I thought Amy was a small flightless bird, not a fruit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it might be a fruit. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna lower the opacity just a little bit, because I don't want them to stand out too much. Maybe that. Then I can put some more, like, getting closer. It's this bit that I'm currently struggling with, and I think it's just because of the way that the shadows are coming over, so... I can work on the butterfly and everything afterwards. Yeah, composition is a bit of a pain. Obviously, I don't want, um... I don't want the shadows to be too... intrusive, where they take up, like, all of the canvas. Um, I need them to take up a specific amount and then everything else is just kind of because obviously like you can see without them it doesn't work with them he looks very um, focused in the middle which is kind of cool uh, I'm gonna make another version of this I'm just gonna get rid of these of him and I'm gonna put in behind 
which side's behind? Oh, I actually need to fix that, but so I'm just gonna. There was a pattern I put behind there. Might help if I do that, not that. Thank you. Is there two of these? Oh, it's that one. Okay, that explains a lot. That one, thank you. Yeah, I ended up putting like a bunch of uh, flower patterns down there to try and make it look cool. So. The upper left shadows kill fun. Yeah, I, it's, it's, um, it's because they're not coming from like all different kinds of perspective. And that's the issue I've got at the moment. Um, it's trying to make this room feel like it's 3D, but having the shadows not... Yeah, it's, it's really awkward. So... Two hours or more. Well, at the moment, I think oh, we've been streaming for almost three hours and I have just... I forgot, so... Epic fail for me. Kiwi is a good dog name. <laughs> that's great. Um, you made a mistake and you don't have- just- just draw a new picture or trace like the picture you drew so far and then start another one. I can't really give you much more advice than that. I really love that pattern underneath. I think it adds so much more to the- the window than it just being plain. It's kind of like feels like there's a garden outside. Uh, where on earth did- oh, that's where she is. So I was trying to find out where Kimiko went. I'll close that, because I've had it open this whole time without realising. Ah, these shadows though. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out what I want to do with them. I'll probably figure that out um, off stream. Just because it's gonna take me a few attempts. I might spread them out a little bit more. Um maybe so have less of them but have them moving in what feels like different directions more i also need to put some stuff on the wall uh just here so for example there's supposed to be a chimney or a fireplace here so i can't remember what color i had it before oh wondering whether I was doing that. These kinds of things are yeah, they, they, they can be quite hard to draw sometimes. Like, I'm trying to figure out what kind of design I want. If I want everything to be really easily visible. If I want to design on the, the, the wood or the, the stone. Whether I want it to be designed of wood or stone. I guess not wood because it's burning. <laughs> so, it would just be stupid, but yeah. You tell me how to draw a hairline. Oh yay! Yeah, hair lines are um very important. So is the part of the hair, it's really important as well. Most of it should be coming Lol it's no, it's coming out of um Gibranth though. It is technically the monster is Gibranth, but uh so it's gonna be coming off of him. But yeah, there was that and then there was a big family portrait that I had. Um, which, obviously, that's just gonna make him feel worse. I think that's why I put it there. <laughs> wow, I'm such a nice person. <laughs> See me in my sin. I'm sorry, you can breathe. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't do it on purpose, but, I mean, that's a lie. So, yeah. So 
Sorry, you're in my way, and I need a brush. To my, uh, what's from a call it of brushes? Can I? I want like that color, and I wanna just pat down different texture on this. So I want it to have at least some kind of texture. So I'm trying to find what one is going to work the nicest for what I want. Oh, okay, this one's good. It means I can put like cracks or patterns in it. And it kind of looks like it's more made out of like stone. I actually have a stone one too, which I can stick in there. You're very confused by what's happening. Um, I'm drawing characters that I own. This is my child. His name is Gabranth. This is his child, who is my child, who is, uh, Ethan. This is also him. This is him as a child. This is him as not a child. This is his best friend. She's a jerk. Um, and this is a spoop. <laughs> That, that's I think that's like the entirety of, of everything I draw is just yeah. Oh, I'm really happy that you improved a bit. Like um, I always hope that what I do is not futile. It's kind of hard thinking of words. I don't know how to English. Oh, that was it. I wanted to put something in the background. So I made a bunch of textures, um, like a bunch of textures. Uh, oh no, did I get rid of my textures? It did. Oh my gosh, why did you get rid of my textures? You butt. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait, I'm gonna go grab one of my textures. I have an entire folder of textures that I made that I need. Where are my textures? Uh, patterns? Nope, that's not it. Oh no, did I not keep my other... Why? Oh man. So I think I've lost my textures? Unless I put them in my folder. Do I still have them? No, where's April? Sorry, I was gonna use um, one of the ones that I had, so... At least tell me it's in here. Yes! Ah! Okay. I'm gonna save these as patterns again. Oh, dang, I would have gotten rid of my brushes, too. The ones that I just made. Okay, I don't need that one. More bricks. Uh, can you please pattern the brick? And then there's concrete. So I would like to pattern the concrete. I went through and like made these so they all repeat properly. So now, if I go through here, I can grab this one and then I can do that. So now I actually have like a texture. Yeah, I don't want it to be too bright. I'm actually going to dull the whole thing. With that color? That is not the color I want. Thank you. And I'll just take it off a little bit. I'm glad people enjoy it, so. She loves to draw her, her baby sad. Yeah! That's pretty much it. Yeah. I like drawing uh, emotional pieces. I don't know what it is. Emotional pieces are just kind of cool to see. You get a glimpse into somebody else's world, you can feel what they're feeling. Uh, depending on your day, sometimes you can kind of like really connect with them as well. Um, which is what I really liked about some of the older pieces that I used to like from some of the artists that I used to follow. Every now and then you just get like something really cool like that. That is not a square.
I don't know what to draw, I literally just play with any kind of concept I can I can think of at the time and then go from there. So now I've got like something that kind of sits there. Um can stick that on there. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and hide that and just do that. And I'm going to try and just so I'm basically trying to blend it into the background enough where obviously it exists in the space but it's not detracting from Gabranth so I don't want anything taking away that space from him how do you do leaves um you find a lot of brushes online <laughs> and use their brushes um, or have a look at references of leaves and practice drawing leaves, I guess, in a lot of different angles and then eventually you'll get like something you like. Also I needed that picture that I had earlier which I forgot to put in here again. So I don't need the folder, I just need the picture which is this one. The family portrait. And it was up here. And you can't see the mother on it. Man, I'm a jerk. I really love this. Okay, so this family portrait that I have, um, I actually have an IRL version um, inside the locket that Ethan wears. So it's actually like on my, um, officially on my, my desk. I have three of them on my desk. I gotta give one to a fan of mine. Um, and I'm giving one to Pat and one to Alec. So, yay! I absolutely love, like, all my hardworking VAs, friends, and what they do. Whoops. Oh no, that's fine. I can do that design. So this is just a, I'm just trying to fill in this background a little bit, because it's what used to be there. Um, I will dull it off a bit so it's not so in your face bright as it is currently. Their life's not that bright, it's um... <laughs> I, I feel so mean, I've just ruined their lives. That's such a cute gift. Yeah, I'm so excited to like hand it out because I really like it. I love being able to make cool stuff. So all of the stuff that like my OCs have, I want to have an IRL version of. I want Gabrant's pocket watch. Like I really want Gabrant's pocket watch. I just want to get his pocket watch or get a silver pocket watch. It doesn't have to be silver, it can just be metal. I just want it to be the colour of silver. And I want it engraved with that little symbol of his on it. And then I want to put the picture of his entire group in there. Yeah, that's what I want. But yeah, it's gonna be progress. <laughs> Fall asleep right before. Sh well, you're lucky. I streamed for like three hours, so you got like another ten minutes of stream time. <laughs> so, yeah, at some point, like I'll um, post it on ins not Instagram. Um, I can't remember what it's called anymore social media or the community post. I'll post it on the community post at some point for anyone who's interested because I've been posting on there. Okay, I think that works. And then if I just uh, lower the opacity to like that and then merge the whole thing. Yep. And then do the same thing again. But just... Because I don't want them bright. Like, I definitely don't want them in view that much. I just want them to take up enough space. So you know they're there, but it's not in the way. Give us your last bit of advice. Well, that would depend on what advice you want. Because I, I don't... You can't just ask for general drawing advice. Because most people would just say practice. <laughs> What about Relic's book? I want Relic's book! 
Oh, one day, one day, one day. I will get a big book, and I want to have, like, um... I gotta draw all the symbols for the runes that they read back in, back in his thing. And then I would write down, like, all of the incantations for all the spells that he would use, and then what they would actually have for the use of those spells and stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah, this is literally, uh, it's kind of like life and death battling each other in this this one image and stuck in between that is a little kid and because it's like um his mother had this ability um with the the pretty stuff on it and now that she's gone it's like all three of them are still in the same picture but at the same time it feels like ethan's all alone and he's all by himself just watching his father go down an emotional roller coaster and he can't do anything because he's like six so this is a very hard it was actually a very hard picture to concept like i knew i what i wanted to some degree but the concept changed quite a bit actually I love that oily effect. Yeah, I definitely need to do more work on um, this this bit. I feel like these probably need to be pushed forward a lot more um, so that they're all hitting like that bit. So, oh, cool. so if I bring, I'm just gonna quickly scribble. There we go. So if I scribble these to come here, um, maybe it would look a little bit better because then i can have like the they can actually um hit different points of it too so i could have them come in like that so that's one option i might play with the shapes of them more and then if i put uh like a big piece up here from the window so it's just like you can almost have more light from it which would make sense as to why this bit can't come in um because i'm trying to keep the shadows away from the actual light of the window so a family falling apart kind of um the mother passed away and she was everything like literally everything to this guy she had saved his life she had given him a son a home um and a bit of a purpose and now that she's not there anymore he's just he doesn't know what to do with himself anymore and he's kind of forgotten that there's a little boy that still really wants and needs his dad in front of him <laughs> bye child <laughs> Eventually, though, like, because you can see why um, he would have left after this as well, because it's kind of scary to think that, you know, you'd have scared your kid so much. But eventually I get to draw them older, and I get to draw them actually hugging. I am so looking forward to when I can draw them hugging. Oh my gosh, they're going to look adorable. Gabrand with his awful, like, awkward-ass uh, smiley face, and then Ethan just awkwardly like yeah okay this is a hug that's happening <laughs> awkward teenage boy although i'm gonna have gabrant like actually smile properly i love i love his smile so much when he actually genuinely smiles i think that's why i like his awkward smile a lot because like it's like it's the most common thing that you get is his awkward smile so when he genuinely is smiling um because he's really happy you kind of like feel the difference and it feels so special that's great so what else can i do i think these ones i might pull these ones to go down like that more maybe so uh and i can bring some more just coming through like the cracks of the the thing a little bit And then the shadow's coming off him specifically. Um, if 
he was to turn around, no, his marking would be on the opposite side, so it's actually on the wrong side. So I can't do that, but... Uh, this butterfly... I might keep the idea of the butterfly here, but I'm probably going to make like the outside of this maybe a little bit stronger. We'll see, because I'm not sure if I really want to make that like super prominent or not. But it's like Ethan's little safety bubble. It's kind of cute actually seeing him like in a little safety bubble. It sounds so awkward. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I mean, like it—it's always awkward hugging your parents, right? That's just like—it seems to be like a thing. Um, especially if you like you don't see your parents all the time. So like as you get older, that sort of like becomes a thing, I guess. But it's all it's almost more awkward when you're a teenager you're just like i don't want to hug my parents or like anyone else <laughs> just stay away from me <laughs> i'm the opposite now i like crave hugs because hugs are great and hugs especially andy's hugs andy gives the best hugs Yeah, I think if I do this, it, it feels more directed, um, a little bit. But, I mean, that means he's, they're gonna be moving with an intent, but I suppose they're already moving with an intent to some degree, so. Do you listen to K-pop? Um, I think I only ever listened to the KDA thing, and that's about it. Uh, I hug my parents all the time when I'm turning 18 to... See, that's cute though! But like, I guess I- maybe it's just me, I was just awkward as... Let's all give Amy a hug. I wanna- okay, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I could hug my OCs. That would be amazing, like, can you imagine getting a hug from Tama? That'd be like, awesome. And then Relic would give you like, such an energetic, happy hug. And Kimiko- Kimiko would be really weird to hug, cause... I feel like she'd steal my wallet, so maybe I won't hug Kimiko. <laughs> or at least I got my I got my premise for this to some degree. Um, I'll keep playing with it a little bit, but we're getting there. I'm happier with this composition compared to uh, that one. That one has a little bit of a different mood, though. Um, I do like the atmosphere that it seems to generate a little bit. Um, I might add a bit more atmosphere to this one, so like put some purple in through here, um, maybe do the same in the corner, make it like more purpled out. So, we shall make progress. Eventually when it's finished I'm gonna do um, a voice scenario over the top. Obviously it's not gonna be speed painted this one. Um, I've been speed painting my stuff a lot less actually. I don't know, it's just like, I guess I've, I've been enjoying the process more and I kind of just want to keep to enjoying the process and when you got like a recording going on I'm always worried that I'm not doing it fast enough or that I have to keep putting the recording on when I'm going to start so it kind of just makes it feel more tedious than it should be. Close that, I don't need it open now. But yeah, I think this is good enough. So I'm going to end stream here. Um, this picture will probably be finished sometime this week. I got another picture that I gotta work on before the end of the day happens. So yeah. Um, thank you guys for coming to stream. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, next time I stream, I 100% will do my Shimiji stream and I'll show you guys how to make uh, a Shimiji. So, we'll do that next time. I'll finish Kimiko's off. So, thank you guys for coming. Uh, thank you for sticking around for so long. <laughs> Uh, and I will see you guys next time I stream, which will probably be next weekend, unless like I, for some reason, have free time during the week. So, bye guys!